Hello and welcome to this edition of The Halcyon Show. My name is Lorne Risley and I'm going to be your host for this episode. And on this edition, I'm going to be joined by a very special guest. A gentleman by the name of Jacob Overgaard. However, he's better known as Baby Ducker. The developer and publisher of a game that I reviewed recently. Danger, Action, Speed, Heroes or Dash. This gentleman has very kindly decided to sit down with me, discuss the game. We're going to discuss a bunch of different topics as it relates to being an indie developer. We're also going to be talking on a few other subjects as well. It's a long discussion, but a really good in-depth discussion about indie games in general. So I hope you enjoy it. But before we get into that, we do get straight into the conversation as soon as the recording kicks in and I want to give out his socials. So if you wouldn't mind, check him out over on his website, www.babyducker.com. Check him out on SoundCloud, Baby Ducker. He also has an Instagram account under the same name, same with Facebook. He's also on YouTube. And finally, he is at Baby Ducker CPH on Twitter. So do me a favor, go check him out on the social media, go support his music, go support his game, and go support him wherever you can find him. But without further ado, let's get into the interview. Absolutely. Look, look I did the exact same thing. And uh, I, th- this is the thing. I don't want. I have the same things when I set up my uh, podcast with my other buddy. It's like, dude, eight o'clock. But if you need time to get yourself comfy, because it's it, we might be here a while. Take your time, man. You know what I mean. Nothing worse than when you're like, ah, fuck, I forgot. Ah, do you know what? Just, just, just give me a minute. And then you go up and you come back and you go, okay, all right, I'm cool now. Takes time. Takes time. How are you today? Are you well? I'm so good, man. I'm so happy because I managed to do the um, the slope update, which was uh, very, very hard, <laughs> very hard. It was um, it was definitely a bit more challenging than I had thought of, but um, that I thought. But that's how it is. It's good to be naive about something and just begin a couple of days uh, before that I have to update it and then realize it takes four days. But hey, uh, I'm the boss, so who cares? <laughs> well, uh, do you mind if I ask? Because you have to forgive me, I'm I'm sort of new to the indie scene as a whole. I've I've been a not a casual gamer, but sort of the games I've been playing are more AAA in nature. So the uh-huh. kinds of things okay. that I see people complain about AAA games are oh the graphics aren't as good as the last generation, or um, you know oh th- this doesn't have as many features. With indie games, the complaints I see are sometimes the most minute of things. So the one example that always sticks out to me is people complain about the menus. In indie mm-hmm. games, yeah, that's 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 true. Yeah, that's what, true. What in your experience, having made, um, uh, Dash, I, I can explain why. Oh, please, like, please I, do. I, please I even do. I, I I tried it with. Um, oh, just for the record, too. I'm I'm recording from now on. No, and, me uh, too. Me too. Well, I'll, uh, I'll probably introduce this at some point, but we'll just we'll we'll get into it as and when. Excellent. Well, that's a funny that's a funny question. Uh, that's a funny question indeed because. I had, I had, I think I watched a talk or two about it, and um, and I was a bit before I made my my, my first like official released uh, title. I I thought, yeah, of course it's obvious that you need a proper menu. Of course it's totally underrated. It's something that professional developers don't, uh, you know, they think about it. Of course uh, that's obvious, and and I know how much I have loved all the menus that I know people have cared so much uh, for and. And have done really well in um, in my past, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna make this awesome. I I, I put it down on the design document. I was sure this menu was going to be so nice, and my first title, Urban Pirate, and uh, <laughs> it was one of the first things that I I was I had I received critique for um, because everybody is just waiting to um, look at an indie title and be like, ah, again the menus, and, ah, it's so. And, and, and I'm saying it because when I came to the last period of the development and like many smaller developers, they maybe have to release it at some point or, and I was like, I have to, I have to release it there. I just, I, I this good window there. I want to release it just there. And there's still three months and plenty of time. And, and, uh, then, um, three months after I was like, okay, I, this is released now. And the past week I had just been testing and testing. And that's what I think that everybody who begins developing games and they they just don't know how much testing there is uh, to it so so i just spent so much time testing i didn't have any time for making that good proper menu (laughs) with Hmm. the uh, you know custom you know with the controls and you can decide with the the screen size etc i think it's such a classic thing for many indies because so many people are so good at 
with the vision and with the animations and the whole personal sort of atmosphere. But once it get, gets to something as boring and as technical <laughs> as menu, menus, um, it, it, some, some developers, I think most developers just wait until later. And also because maybe that menu needs to refer to stuff that is not yet implemented. At the, mm. But I did it. I de definitely got my, uh, my hit in the face uh, from the... In the reviews where they were just ah okay there's another indie funny game but ah it's so obvious uh, you know uh, the, there's nothing you can do in the menus and the menus suck and they are pretty much not there and <laughs> so I, I, we did a little more uh, here in, in Dash the current production here mm. um, especially with my my two partners when we were testing a lot and, and sort of brainstorming about design and the user experience and, and etc mm. I um I definitely <clears throat> thought of a bit more about the menus and. Um, the the fact that even though it's a very early stage we're at right now with the, almost being a demo but not a, not a demo it's a full game yeah sure people are uh, p people are still sort of accepting that there are some missing features despite the fact that it's a full price and etc so so uh, we did we did some stuff but um, it's it's even on my list uh, because of uh, your awesome work uh, because you commented on 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 the fact about that there's no cust customizable uh, controls, right? Like many other people have, 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 have said as well. And that's the last polish and finish. <laughs> and it is easy, in fact. I think you mentioned it as well. It is, it is easy. And it's such a funny thing with, uh, about the, um, the priorities when you are a small developer and you don't have a, like a manager or producer who kind of says when, what should be done, et, et cetera. Mm. You just have to find out yourself and make your own sort of estimates. and. And uh, sometimes these uh, such a small thing as the, cust the the custom controls, it could be like maybe five or six hours of work and testing and integrating. Oh. Um, yet it could be another two hundred hours, maybe three hundred hours before it's it's there. You know, it's uh, but there are so many so many little things like um, yeah, such it's such a funny world. This more loose, more free frame of development where you. Maybe you don't know exactly what you're going to do today, but mm. A takes you to B, to takes you to C, and you, because you have the freedom to go to D and E, and nobody's preventing you uh, from going to G and H, and then uh, you just go and and have fun with whatever comes up, and it leaves maybe a couple of loose ends, but I guess that's the that's the indie way, I think. Well, let me yeah. let me let me come back to that because because you've touched on something that I can sort of relate to, but I want to get your take on it. So. As, as you've mentioned, when you're, de when you're designing a game, I imagine a bulk of the reason why you're doing it in the first place is because you're inspired to do it. There's, a, there's part of you that wants you to bring a realization, a creative dream to life. When you're imagining True. it and putting it together, the first thing you yeah. think of isn't right now. How many options do I have in the menu screen? What, what, what option? Do I want a tab? Do I want to use a map? Like, I, I can appreciate that from, from, the, from the gamer's perspective, that's something that might be important from time to time, but your focus has to be, and, and people would criticize you if it wasn't, on producing yeah. the best game, the, the best bulk of the experience. So is that frustrating to a degree that people it is. would look overlook? Because again, coming on your game, for instance, it's, it's beautifully put together. I can't fault how it's been put together. And to your point, even though it's not full release, it's well worth oh, the asking with, price. with the new update today. Oh, with the new update. Oh, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll get sorry. to that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited to hear about it because you've, 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 you've been giddy to tell me about it. But, <laughs> sorry about that. No, no, no. It, well, to... I'm just I'm curious from your perspective how, how that factors into how you produce an indie game when you know that your audience is so passionate about not just what the game experience is going to be, but every aspect of your game. You must have to bring your game up a level than, than a AAA title has to. <clears throat> I, I think, um, I, I, know, I know for a fact that a lot of people, unfortunately, in the, the top of the industry, in the AAA, um, you know, businesses, etc., they work almost like more hours than there is in a day. So mm. it's, not like, it's not like small developers work more, but... We are in this very special time of age where a guy like me who who is able to do all of the sort of disciplines, you know, everything from audio to the to uploading to the server, all of this, uh, it's a lot of stuff that you really need to, to be good at. And uh, something that so many people don't think about is the UI experience. Uh, so many universities all over the world have a almost like a class on its own about the UI, the user, experience, the user interface and the user experience. And it's such a 
deep world of, of knowledge and experience. You, you can just learn so much about it. And it's something that we, it's kind of like you, if you want to make a movie and uh, you had the tools to do it, then you don't really think about how important it is with the credits in the end and with the proper yes. score. And, and, and that, that whole thing is just such a deep world of, of art, really. And, 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 and you really have to be either, as I have been, uh, lucky to be uh, from a, an early age, I kind of were, I was in touch with this in some way. I, I've also through music, I've worked with music scores and soundtracks, etc. So I know that there are so many, so many deep, deep uh, cliffs in the in the big uh, landscape of, 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 of development. And and that's a that's a great uh, question also to, to kind of get into this. So, uh, knowing about what I do and what the indie developer does, whether it's music or it's games or whatever, it's just always a lot more work than you know. And that's why the whole indie scene, especially in games, I think, mm. got this whole, um, almost their own genre, you know, their own genre. And we got our own sort of corner at the at the big, um, exp you know, the big uh, events, etc. And it's growing and growing and growing <clears throat> because, uh, usually that's that what that's that hashtag that sort of tag indie is is what people relate to this more um you know the guy might not be super good at uh, let's say making um the soundtrack mm. but he is he or she is so incredibly um born to do the uh jump animation or the this new way of looking at puzzles or and that's why many people kind of uh like cartoons in the 80s had a lot of this this as well maybe the, there was a very good storyteller but he was extremely bad at drawing so mm. everybody who bought the comics sort of knew that and was, it was even something that in the brand was helping f uh, customers relate to this sort of uh, way it looks and behaves and that's what i want to do in the games and that's what i want to do in my music too and everything i almost can't help it even when i try to do something very you know, um, you planned and designed and I'm trying to be as intellectual about it as, as I can. Mm. It always because I have the freedom and I don't have any sort of oppressive frames or anybody around me sort of saying I can't do this and that, then it gets this more personal, I think, um, touch to it that like the first game I, I develop is a great example because it's a, it's obvious that the developer is really not good at the user experience and the UI, etc. But I have such a personal story to tell in, in, in that uh, game. So everybody who loves that game and it's kind of become a, you know, this little miniature cult classic within a very little niche, they, they wouldn't want it to be any other way because they, they know that for the story to be that kind of story and the game to be that kind of game, there's a trade-off that the guy who did it did not have the budget to, you know, either invest in or hire people who are skilled or trained in, in these, um, uh, you know, with the UI, the user experience, etc. Mm. But as, but as I, I grew with, with that the first game, I learned a lot from it. So I knew what I then had to prioritize a little less and then, you know, maybe don't spend that much time on um, maybe, um, you know, cut scenes or stuff that takes time, but maybe try and work more with the menus and, and get more feedback from testing those menus. Something as basic as basic as that is something that many people don't know that you have to do. You need to sit for many hours and just with many different people to see where they move the cursor and how, how far there is to this and A and B and C. It's a very complicated process, I would say. But luckily, a lot of developers just jump right into it, not knowing how long it takes to do. Uh, I think that's that's kind of fortunate. Um, so I don't hope I scare any, um, if anybody wants to develop the first game. <laughs> I don't want to scare them away. I just want to say, don't start with the menu, but just make sure that you know how imp important it is. People Indeed. will... It's the first thing that you enter in the game often, and you want to f make you want to feel good, and you want to you know it, it's not, it, it's not can't just be this uh, you know thing that you just put together within the last week and then you publish. <laughs> no, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> no, you well. This is the thing, and I find this trait because I've I've had conversations with a few de developers since I started reviewing indie games. You're one of the first ones that I really had a very good conversation with about your game prior to reviewing it. And uh -huh. one thing that struck me is how deeply you thought about the game, how passionate you were about it, and that was before I even got into the game itself. Then I started playing it and I started getting um, more and more used to the controls and, the, and, and what the game is demanding of me. And yeah. it struck me initially that 
it, it's so easy to perhaps overlook certain aspects because there's little this is little things about the different indie games that when you when you're playing a lot of them as i imagine a lot of your your gamer base is they're maybe maybe not playing a game for 50 60 70 hours at a time they're swapping between games one mm-hmm. of the things they come across is the frustration of having to adapt to a new game game format how how you design the game which yeah. is unfair on you because you can't you can't factor in every it's a bit like uh, you're you're a um, you you're a, a car you're a car manufacturer but you you you're building them out of y- your own time and stuff you can't compete with mercedes mercedes have a department to decide where that radio dial is going to be mm-hmm. and then to test that and then to and then to go back and forth you go how do i get this to work so that it fits in with my narrative it fits in with my design and it fits in with the way that i want my game to feel you're almost yeah. caught in a rock and a hard place, aren't you? Because you're trying to tailor the experience to make it unique, but also to make sure it's as ergonomically sound as possible for your gamer base. So how do you mm-hmm. how do you go about mm-hmm. tempering that when you're now that the game's out and now you're you you know you're tweaking it, you're you're adding things, you're you're enhancing the experience. How do you go about prioritizing what you think is worth um, uh, it, uh, exposing your gamer base to? <clears throat> That's a very good question. Uh, in this in this case, it's um, this game dash that I'm making. It's uh, it's a special game because it's uh, it's not really a game that has so much to offer. It's a lot about about what the users are kind of seeing in it and want to do with it. It's sort of almost like a pro like an app. It's almost not. A, it's a half a game, half an app. Uh, so we have had the community uh, with us from the beginning, mm. and even before there was a game to play, there was people. Uh, there were people interested, and with uh, through the forums on, on you know on all kinds of different indie sites and, and forums, etc. There was a little clique, and on Twitch, I found the mo- some mods who really enjoyed the process, and and I even streamed to twice a week at that time. So I, I managed to sort of snowball a little, you know tiny snowball um to to get excited about the demo mm. <clears throat> so 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 when i like that's almost that's one year ago maybe even one and a half years ago so so the people are still there the the original group uh, all the mods and the fans and, and more people have come um so we are now a, a little a larger group of people both playing both the, the to also to just explain this is a platformer game that I, i'm making so so what's interesting about it is that you can make your own levels and it's not like a, a little thing that if you want to do it, it it's something that you don't have to do it but there are definitely a side to the game where it's depending on people creating the levels so mm. um that there's not like a pre-made set of, of levels etc it's really 100 percent user based in that way so so people are so used to when they buy the game and the ticket to to be a part of the early access and, and the development they also know that they they have something to say so mm-hmm. sometimes i ask sometimes like recently uh, i i I, exp- I sort of experimented with it and and i asked the the community what they wanted this tile or that o- other tile i think it was the 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 crumbling tile where you step on it and, and Indeed, it and yeah. sort of dis- disappears and the other op- option was like a, a tile that, that sort of spat out fire um every x seconds and 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 people decided that they wanted the crumbling tile over the other one so Mm. they voted with the reactions on the uh, on our discord because our discord is uh what i think is is the best place to to experience this community um that we're um yeah so 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 yeah um that that, that's what i that's what i kind of collect is what people say i would love this i would love this and and of course there's so many things that are being so many balls being thrown into the air but then i catch what i sort of sense are the most um the the things that i sort of have the the chance to you know the, the time to to integrate and 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 if it's not a too crazy idea or it's not too hard then i then i sort of write them down in a list mm. and then i know that every second week i will make an update so and i've done that the, for six weeks now so it's three updates and yeah that's the way i i, I kind of go about it and also because this is a 2d platformer that rests on the shoulders on of, of, of so many other games right so so there are some things that are sort of gimmicky or it's like a something you'd like you you have to have it uh, in the game mm-hmm. i can compare i can compare dash a little bit to the also like maybe some of the b movies of, of the 80s where 
they kind of copied a theme from a very popular, sure, sure. Um, a bit huge, and, and then they sort of snatched everything that was a sort of simple from that movie, like a strong man with a mullet uh, and you know all these <laughs> all these things that it, it had to have at that time, right? Of course. And yeah. and, bec and because this is a low resolution, what you would call a retro game, because it has low resolution graphics that may look a bit more like the games from the '90s, early '90s, and etc then there are some things that are sort of obvious that you just want in there. And uh, we have, I think, most of them. But the very interesting thing about this process is that because we have this whole world and the engine set up to support the 2D environment and everything is possible and the wall slides and da da da, then, then it sort of becomes, <clears throat> some things become, you know, also totally uh, totally new like uh, wow we want, want we want this new thing and, and I'm realizing wow I've, I've never seen that in a, in a platform before so that is something that I couldn't come up with or the, the people in our small team when we were together when we try to put in new ideas especially from the beginning where there was no community we sort of try to, to, to think about what we wanted but since the community came uh, they have come with come up with ideas that I honestly had had no chance of thinking about mm. so so that's that's why that's a, that's such a that's such a giving process and i think some developers avoid it a bit because maybe they don't like the the constant communication and they don't like the relationships that you establish with the mods and the, the super fans and the ones from the beginning who are just there for you but but i'm lucky again that that's what i also did in my other like creative processes like almost my entire life was was making events and like music events etc we always had to have this sort of communication with the community and you always had to talk to people who were just really into doing it they don't want anything uh, from you they don't want you know they're not there to get paid they just want to have a good time and make sure the the project succeeds and that's uh, that's definitely uh, such a typical thing about the I think the indie community you have the possibility to really be close to these people and I, I, I must admit some of these people uh, are crucial to the, the the positive development of the game like especially like we have a handful of people who are um, have spent hours and hours uh, testing the game um, just because they wanted it to succeed and help help the process mm. and and these people are these people are like in many projects like we know from even you know super meat boy and um and all of these like indie classics you might not know it uh, because it's a become so huge but all of these projects began with a tiny community with people uh finding the game in some in some weird way and just being there a couple of times a week writing how are you doing uh, i'm looking forward to this and that is the key a way to survive as a developer i think if you're small and you're very ambitious and you just want to do your thing and you almost can't sleep if you're not doing it and it's <laughs> in, in my case it was crucial to get this connection to the community and that's how i know what to put in to the game basically if they weren't there i just wouldn't put anything in the game so when they're there and they talk about what they like and they don't like then i of course i'm in this uh, dialogue and I write down also with my friend who's also on the team, but he's a bit further away, but he, he's writing this stuff down to make sure that we are collecting all of these things. And again, this, this, this is a great feedback uh, sort of circle because then the community sees that we are uh, making the things that they are asking for or dreaming of and they get even more excited, right? So it's a very positive uh, cycle in the process. Uh, super exciting. Um, I did, definitely did not have any of this in my previous production, so that's also the goal of this production. I really wanted uh, this social structure in the development. Mm. Super interesting. Well, it's that's clear to see. I mean, if you go into... Uh, obviously, you shouldn't ever judge a game by its reviews on Steam, because, of course, they can be tremendously biased and tremendously uneducated. However, a uh, number of your uh, reviews on there have left... 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 plus hours of gameplay. So you know that they've tested the game thoroughly and played the game thoroughly. And a yep. common thread seems to be just how quirky and different, even in, in the genre of indie games that your game is. And I can attest to that because when I first started playing it, I was expecting just a bog standard platformer with some nice design and some, uh, some, interesting, some interesting elements. But it became clear very, very quickly 
that that wasn't what this game. I mean, to give you to give you uh, an insight. The first level I played, I think, had no platform in front of me at all and a series of enemies coming from behind me. And I looked at it and went, what? It, what it, I don't know what to do. What? I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. Ah! Now, but the way that the game invites you in and it encourages you and it almost allows you to tailor your experience is a breath of fresh air. And coming back to my question, that must make it trickier as a developer for you to, to know what is right and wrong to leave in on instinct. That's why the input of your audience is so crucial. How much fun That's was true. it to see the game develop in that way? Because it's almost at that point... I mean, uh, you've, you've put the game out there, but the game is evolving almost on its... Obviously, you're putting the input, you're putting the hours, and you're going to collect that, hopefully, that big juicy paycheck at the end. But, hopefully, uh -huh. it's just... It's this constant state of evolution that's governed by the people enjoying it. I mean, that must be it's so true. amazing. It's so true. You're so right. Uh, you're really good at it. That's a very that's a good way to put it. Um, it is it is something which is overwhelming, and I don't think everybody can do it because it's such a special sort of work life you have. Um, also, because everybody who who's on the in, on the community channel is far away, and maybe you don't even know their real names. You don't know their fate, how how they are in reality, but. But but this is uh, something that I don't think was as easy, or at least for me, I could not do it ten years ago. I don't know if I can do it in five or ten years. But right now, there's this sort of uh, window, um, and and some uh, like five years, uh, also five years ago, I think it began to be more like, established and possible for people like me as well. And it, it, I, I would definitely suggest if you are um, into making whatever project it is, even music. Uh, or something which is such a conservative business, I, I would I would suggest trying to look into this way of projecting your process and showing this process. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's I mean for me even on the days when I don't maybe feel like doing any work or anything, there is still people who are excited about it, and because we have a Discord that. Um, you know, shows whenever people in the game break a world record or they upload a level, etc. It just bumps me on, on my notification on my phone. And <laughs> it's just this whole like ant farm of activity. And, and that's even only a few of the, of, of the, the technologies we're using, right? We could be using much more platforms, various, uh, you know, much more, uh, you know, we could, we could even go in different languages and go to other countries and I don't know what. So even in this very narrow sort of space where you have to speak English and you have to have found the game on either Steam or this like IndieDB or these like uh, indie forums mm. um, because the game have not been, you know, projected to the, the commercial press because we have not put the budget there yet, then it simply does not happen, especially not with the early access title uh, 2019. It could be like a 2015, 16, it could be more possible that some of the major outlets or the, the more commercial sites such as uh, PC Gamer and the, the larger ones, mm. they, they, could, they could maybe catch the hype and maybe they wanted to write about you, but everything has changed a lot over the last two, three years. So, so we have not put a budget there, so it has not really been bumped uh, to, the, like, to the mainstream. And, mm -hmm. and that's something we're waiting for because we want this momentum, momentum to happen when we are ready with the final game, right? Um, <clears throat> but but, but it, it's, something, it, it's something that you really have to, you have to keep your eyes open and, and when you do this. You really have to, every day, you have to see where the, where, where's everything going. And even Discord, I, when I began the design document and began developing Dash, I didn't even, I wasn't even on Discord. Uh, and, and Discord has become such a major important part of the development. Mm. So I, I have just really, every day I have waken up, I've been very lucky also to be able to spend almost all of my time on this, uh, also on my other productions through my production company but this has been like a 90 80 percent priority every day for almost 24 months so so it also requires you to have really a lot of time and, and energy to wake up in the morning and then open your apps and find out if anybody has tried it tested it found feedback you know new users um especially especially the bug bug finding which is something that is the most important thing for the community i think mm. because the la larger companies have like a whole you know section in their game um studio where people come in and, and get paid to just sit and test 
uh, and show you the, their experience and they will get recorded, etc. I did that with friends and luckily I had some friends who had some time off who just worked with me for two months almost every day, testing the game, playing the game, spent hundreds of hours testing the game. And that was along the community who also spent that much time testing. So, hmm. so I think, I think it's, it's, it's something that like every game requires a lot of time to make and the more plans you have about it, the more like ambition, the larger, the greater the, the, the dream is about it, the longer it will take to make because it's just that way. I, I think that's my experience. So, <clears throat> so it's such a gift to be able to, to wake up and not only have the help, help and hands from, from your friends and the ones close, but also random new people who are strangers yesterday, but today they are part of your team. Mm. And then you, of course, re reward them with the roles on the, on the Discord and sort of give back to them in that sense and give nicknames and have fun, etc. But oh. it, it is something which I would never have done if I knew what, the, what it would take. Um, also the investment in it, the time it takes, uh, because we are making a game that is so open and it has endless uh, replayability, which is a super interesting, um, design. Um, yeah, it's super important and interesting part of the design. Right. So, so it, it, it was definitely something, yeah, uh, that, uh, that it just needs so much testing, so much work. And it has been, it has really been a thrill to, to experience that people mm -hmm. were there. Like when you woke up in the morning. They woke up as well, and <laughs> luckily we're living in the same time zone. So, like, I have a couple of, of friends on the Discord that are just my friends. I, I, I even almost talk to them more than my, my family, you know. <laughs> and Indeed, I, I haven't yeah. met them in real life, you know. So, uh, so yeah, there, there is especially in a game like this where we had such a big ambition about, you know, doing a lot from a very, you know, little budget and little time, etc. It has only been possible with the community um, waking up to that every day and, and talking to them every day, and it's it's something that uh, you know it, it's it keeps me going in such a crazy way because um, now you have everybody expecting you know new stuff, and and even if you have a day where you don't really want to do it, then it's something that reminds you oh you know there there are people who are there waiting for these things, and they are just counting the hours until the final release, and you know they want to get in the hype and be part of this, and and they even consider the game you know their game mm. uh, which is a major accomplishment i think not only as a developer but also as a you know producing a, a thing like this to be able to really give it into the hands not, not in a you know shallow or fake way but really genuinely make people feel that it's their game mm. um, that's why i get so like everybody gets so moved on our channel on our discord when like a guy like you puts up a proper review and in, in such a great and in depth way also with some critique etc it's just making our toes curl because <laughs> it's 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 something that we could never imagine like it was something we could only be dreaming about uh, a year ago where the game was looking a lot mm. worse and didn't have any features and it was only because you could see what would go you know beyond these months uh, of development there would be more and more so <clears throat> So when you dropped your your uh, review, it was a perfect time where the polish there was kind of some more polish to it and some new modes and and a lot of levels and the community was doing great. So so uh, it, it's something I, like I, I would never want to sit and make a game for many years alone and not mm. having anyone to share it with and then drop it and then you make a video. I'm, I'm like, yeah, cool. Like I'm going to watch it and then who else is going to watch it? But because we have this community and this whole like large group of developers slash users, then when I share that video, it's like 50 developers sitting in the same room being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, Woo you know, like like seeing it's almost like seeing your child, I guess, uh, in school uh, where you look from, you know, uh, like I heard some parents say that if the child doesn't know you're watching, then it's kind of magical to to see that baby just do what it does in yeah. real life because you so yeah, uh, it is it is something that I, I would never recommend to anyone who is not up for the task. But if you are and you want to spend your your years together with these people, etc., it is uh, I will never forget these people. I will probably invite them to my wedding. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, I mean, I want to I want to focus on the game a little bit more in a second, but I do want to ask you a broader question because you, you touched on it there, which is obviously as a as an indie developer. You can only focus on you, but in the indie market, it's undeniable there is a cascade of competition. There's 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 an almost endless supply of games, and Tsunami. it's it's almost impossible to know 
what to what to pick and play without having already played it. Now, I got lucky with your game because I played it and it turns out to be an amazing game. I could have just as easily played the next game next to you and had a terrible experience or as good or whatever the case may be. So, in to your mind, what's it like having to produce a game and having to come up with unique and creative ways to market or to appeal to people when you have so much competition. What's that like for you? Well, <clears throat> honestly, it's something which I'm working on to, uh, that, that's a side of the, the whole project that's, that's branch that I wanna be better at doing. Um, it is something like so many developers uh, are, are good at making the game and, 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 and are pretty notorious for not being able to put it like the step beyond. Mm. So I wanted I wanted to make sure at least that when I made the game that there was a large community that knew about the game. So at least we had some sales to just get it started, you know. Um, because as you say, it's such an oversaturated market and almost like every month you just see how much more it becomes oversaturated, right? Mm. It's really like almost from year to year you can see Okay, what's different from this year to this year? Okay, there's okay, there's less um, videos about new indie titles. Uh, it's maybe some of them gave up, and there's only a few left, and they're only taking the ones from you know the latest uh, expo or sure. I don't know G GDC or whatever. So it is it is something which was very popular and hugely like it was so possible for so many people some years ago, but it has narrowed down and become harder and harder. So uh, like what I can feel that. Like back in the day, you could put a game on Steam and you would get X sales because there were just not many indie games, and and that's some years ago. But as every almost every week passed, it was less and less and less sales that you would be uh, sort of uh, certain about yeah. uh, before you even published it. Until like I think almost like a year or eight months ago, it it was just completely out. Like you you have no sales. It's almost like if you are yeah. Macau Macaulay Culkin, if you don't have a Twitter account, and if you open your Twitter account and you're Macaulay Culkin, and you just wait for six hours and nobody follows you. It's not like six seven years ago where there was so much in the algorithms and the design of the apps that sort of helped new names to get discovered. It's just something that not it doesn't happen by itself anymore that's at least what i'm experiencing because even my my previous game sold a lot more copies on the first day the first week despite the fact that it was a lot like i wouldn't say a, a worse it, it's worse no, but, you, but, you, but you've it's, had it, it just... time to make this one the game you want it to be and yet due to that same access the same access that helped you before that not just growth but the exponential growth of competition has yeah. kind of closed that same door that opened for you. So how, I mean, yeah, just so, talk, about, so what, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, but, but I was, like, the thing I was trying to design my way into was to have a really lively Discord channel mm. uh, because this Discord was growing like, like crazy. Uh, two years ago, there was, like, it really began going from, like, like very few users to millions of millions of users, right? And it, it was really hyped, and they were even talking about challenging Steam, and now they wanted their new uh, page where you, you know, their game game store where you could pay, sub, 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 you know, subscriptions, and they wanted to get into this Netflix model where you just pay every month, and you, you just are able to play all the games, and, and I don't know exactly how that turned out for them, but... It was something like so inspiring back back when I heard about it and, and heard some talks about it. I was like, that's definitely going to be the thing. So when we released our demo one year ago, it was almost like I can already say it like the difference from one year ago and today is that one year ago, Discord was so young and everybody was pop. There was so many new ch channels and servers popping up that, that it was easier to find and and, and just from one year, I can see that there are so many new servers now and it has become so hyped and everybody has just marched into this sort of field of new field of, of experience, which is Discord. Then I can already feel now that that is slowly getting a bit oversaturated. So what's the mm. new thing, you know? And, and as you say, exponentially, it's going to be like this for every year until it's almost like every week there's something new. I don't know, you know, it just has to increase in speed in that way. So so I tried to, to do this and, and I have to say that we definitely got a lot of support from the Discord, the group on the Discord, the super fans and the mods and the, the fans that just wanted to support us. 
whether the game was out or not, they probably wanted to to, to support uh, nevertheless, right? So, 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 the, so my my point is that we we kind of went with that approach, knowing that we couldn't win on Steam uh, because we don't have any huge uh, Twitter accounts. We don't have five games before that had success, so we don't have this like. Um, we don't have like publishers have on Twitter and Facebook, etc. They just have a large group of people who bought games before and they like the games. Uh, so they would probably buy the, the next game, right? And I didn't sort of deliver, I didn't collect that data from my previous game because um, I was basically honestly just making that first game to as my education to really begin making games mm. i learned everything i needed to to learn and i didn't price the game too high and people know it's a bit niche so they don't get too upset and it is a great game and i've watched hours upon hours of, of, of let's plays on youtube so it's definitely working and people really appreciate the game but 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 it's just to say that that game just obviously got a lot more traction just because of the market not being as saturated so uh, only three years later, it's so oversaturated that a game like Dash, which ha has so much to offer uh, compared to my previous game, mm. is just disappearing on Steam. So uh, we kind of put put our, you know, we kind of um, expected that the the Discord would gather the people who would buy the game for sure, and a lot of them did buy the game. But um, we just we just like so many developers do, I think we also decided to do that. We just did not have the inspiration and creativity to work as much on the marketing as we wanted to on the game because mm. we were thinking the early access, we, we don't believe in that old, as I see it, a bit maybe stagnant, a bit conservative way of, of seeing games and, and the market where people think that it's the first week that sort of decides the success of the game. I think that's definitely not the case for many games and especially not no, Dash. I agree. Yeah. Um, there are many games that are that should be like this, uh, especially like first like one player experiences where there's no re replayability. It sort of needs this momentum maybe because it's a beautiful game and it's emotional. Maybe it's about a specific subject like a war and uh, and maybe some some significant things to society etc. But a game like this, which is so insignificant to any real thing, uh, we can we can bump this. Um, user base at any time we want because then we need to not work on the game and then just work 100 percent on the on the publishing and the marketing on it right so we were we were trying to get some publishers on the way but uh, some we, we got some good deals and we got some good conversations but eventually they we didn't get through with any of them and i'm just so happy about it um, now that i just got over that bump and don't need the sort of support anymore now that we are at where you know this this place in the development so it has been a huge challenge because when we sold the, the, the game on the first day, of course, if it had sold a hundred or a thousand more copies or I don't know what, then everything would have looked different. If, you know, we would have more money to just uh, focus on the game, maybe even hire someone else to make it even better. I don't know what. Um, but but that's missing. Uh, we had so f few copies sold in the first week that uh, it was nothing at all where we are in, in the world that we could use to spend on, on expenses on living, etc. Mm -hmm. So so I just needed to go the other way that I have been used to for so many years that always have a plan B and always sure. make sure that at least in, that the police are not coming to throw you out of the house, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, luckily I've, I've also been used to that thing uh, for, for a long time uh, through my music career and other productions. I, I'm really aware of this risk. Uh, the only thing was that I was so hyped for it and so confident that when we put it out, I, we had a, I had a, we were a small team when we put it out. Uh, the guy who, who develops the, the server part of the game is called Philip. Uh, Chabelle, uh, he's also his name is also on the credits uh, because he he's such a significant part of the whole um, you know thing about uh, sharing your levels and records. Everything needs to be stored on our, our own server, right? So mm. so he he was there and he has been working for months every day also on the project. And then our third guy, uh, concerned, he's called also on the on the Discord. People know his um, know him as concerned, and he was there and. And I really got so hyped and they really, because they know maybe a little less about the, the production side of it, then, then they, they got some like really big hopes for the first week. And it, it was not at all anything like that. And that was the only thing I was kind of maybe not too proud about, uh, you know, 
putting their hopes up too high, but mm. uh, they, they, they eventually, they understood that I was just, you know, months of developing, you're kind of caught it within the, de the, the release day, you're within the week you're releasing, you're very, you have to be positive, you have to imagine the best thing that can happen, right? Because if you're not, then who is going to imagine it? So I, I put up a scenario that was a more positive scenario and it turned out to be less, uh, Less income, but uh, I think that was that was okay. And we are we're very like artist types, so we don't mind. Like uh, we know that it's a it's something in life that you need to experience, and it's not at all about the the quality of your game, especially not in, in 2019. Also, we, we we can see so it's so obvious, and for so many months, also prior to the release, <clears throat> we can really see the feedback we got from the streams and people recording the gameplay and sending to us. We could really see that the game was working, and people really found the game to be good in, in the way that it should be good so so yeah um we're waiting for our, our full release in december uh for a, for a for a reasonable you know window of marketing and, and going in 100 percent on that and then leaving the development because the game is released in a full version so we're not gonna go in and touch on new updates etc in the first time we're just gonna spend all our time and, and effort and, and budget on you know, going to um, events, etc., showing the game, and um, so it's it was it was something that would have helped a lot, I think, especially oh, like after so many months of pretty intense development, it would be nice uh, if more people had found out about the game. Mm. But yet again, because we we didn't invest, as I know that you have to do, also I know from the music industry, 2019, you just have to put down <laughs> that money for people to write about your game. Yeah. <clears throat> Like even bigger companies, even AAA companies need to put down that money. Da, da, da. It's not like 2012 or 13. It's just uh, the world has changed so fast. Um, so that's what I'm learning here, really like smack in the face. And uh, of course, it becomes very, very real when all of those hours of work are not paid back. But then again, we, we know it's going to be a long process. Uh, maybe it, if it doesn't even get released fully uh, in December, we are totally up for continuing the, the process of the early access, uh, developing more and making the game more solid, but uh, but but again, when the community is so nice and you're you're genu genuinely interest interested in them and the process and making this game continue and grow, then it's the, like the perfect job, I think. Mm. And I'm used to not thinking too much. Uh, I think this is a super good way to look at the world now, and I suggest everyone does it to listen to this. That you, you should be not too aware of. of what you get you know from the man like you, you don't really necessarily get your big um experiences or like big lessons and and stuff you don't get that from from sales or payment or paychecks or working like in my life it has always been about like you can get so much value from something that you never get paid for and you learn that very early when you work with music and you dream about making music music etc you really learn that you you're going to do a lot of work which is just not about money or anything it's about the experience it's about the sort of also the you know the whole yeah i really think the experience in it is the most important thing um and of course you need to get the money on the table but then again it's it's a good game and it's growing and uh, it's at least not um it's not being um you know it's not shrinking <laughs> no so uh, as long as it's growing uh, just steadily uh, even though i'm not uh, you know trying to push the mar marketing aspect of it i think that's that's perfect so uh, then i just need to be good at getting the money on the side and but that's no problem i've, I've mm. always done that uh, i'm used to that i think that's uh, fair enough well, i mean at this point of the, uh, the show probably a good idea to say go buy the game whoever you listening right now go buy the game mm. I, if you didn't watch my review where I said, go buy the game, listen to the man himself. The man, tell the people, go buy the game. You go buy the game. Go buy the goddamn the game. What are you listening to Is this the, for? Yeah. Go and buy the game already. Like, close this. Like, don't <laughs> listen to this. Just get... Yeah. Well, no, but yeah I, but they... I'll, I'll quantify that. I'll, I, I'll uh -huh. quantify why you should go buy this game. First and foremost, the asking price of the game was about where it needed to be right from the get-go. But I laid you down two specific criteria... That I said, if you did this, not only would be the game would the game be worth the price point, it would exceed that expectation. It was you then the story. Both of them. You just went. Oh yeah, well, we're developing those things. I went. 
Go buy the game then. It's a hundred percent recommendation. You can't ask for any more than that. Ah, uh, that cheers. That's really great. And and you, I also we also put the uh, the price down uh, a little uh, from from the beginning because in the, like in the first month it was a, at least it was good that the price was a little higher. But it's 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 lower now and it's more in the same section of like the same level as the other, um, you know, the other games that are quite like a bit similar on mm. Steam as well. Um, so it, it's more like down in the pool of. Uh, of where it's yeah reasonable i think so but thanks uh you should definitely go and buy the game because it's <laughs> what what what's, what's funny about it is also like like maybe i haven't yeah i haven't even talked enough about it i think but this thing about the replay like the replayability the the the, the ability to play the game um like almost look at it look at it as a um like you know like a like paint uh the the program the the app uh paint where you just have a canvas and you just express yourself and maybe that's a bit absurd or a bit abstract uh, to some listeners that you but but we have really like that was one thing that really in the beginning when i showed the demo and i watched people try it out it was something that really blew my mind and have kept me going like much more than i probably would have if i hadn't like made a game like this but to see other individuals express themselves and they find their own humoristic sense in it and all of these things that you do when you create something and your own expression it's really truly working in that way like we have some users where you can just see on the level that that he made or she made it's just so obvious so it is sort of a canvas that you paint because um, the technology behind Dash, which is a two-dimensional game, so it's grid-based, right? It's an X and a Y, and it's some 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 tiles you can place within some specific frames. So, mm -hmm. so it is a bit like a, 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 a painting program in a way, because uh, if you take the pencil and it's it's red, you draw a line, then you take a pencil which is uh, blue, and then you draw some other stuff, and it's the same grid-based, tile-based technology really um, just in a much lower resolution so on our canvas you can maybe place on the biggest uh, big, biggest level you can maybe place uh, some hundred squares to the right and some hundred squares uh, to the uh, you know the top right so that's a lot of squares but if you have a paint program it's a higher resolution like photoshop or paint so you have maybe millions of squares so so it's the same sort of technology uh, it's just much fewer squares so you can still paint what you want to paint like in minecraft uh, i i really i remember when people you know began making pixel art in in, in minecraft and and they started hashtagging you know their um, their work uh, when they put it on twitter they they hashtag like pixel art and people started started to discuss you know there was a huge like a community of like, conservative pixel artists who were like this is not this is not pixel art <laughs> obviously it, it is obviously pixel art uh, it just takes a pixel and, uh, and and then a very extremely simple simplified and and and, and always uh, on low resolution which is the same as Minecraft the game itself does not run on low resolution mm -hmm. but the fact that you can make those squares kind of fit together in, in different layers, etc. And you can make your whole piece and Mona Lisa, whatever you want to do. I, I find that very interesting. And that's just a side sort of thing to Dash as well, that it's not something that I want to do. I don't want to make a game where people draw Mona Lisa, but that, then again, it's not my goal, but but then again, if, if if it is something people can do in the game, that's I think that's brilliant. Especially like nowadays, like in these times we live in, like people are just born being creative. Uh, remember when like we were born you, when you didn't have a phone, then people who, <laughs> people who drew drew something. Um, maybe they were like, oh, they're so creative, you know, oh, this guy he takes pictures, or oh, she's really good at Photoshop, or oh, you need to go to her. But because everybody now can be creative because they have the technology to do it, then it's it's so hard to um, it's so hard to it's so hard to give them something where they can be creative because they spend a lot of time on Instagram and all of these uh, like Twitter and they need to be creative all the time. Mm. So if you can give them something where they want they can be creative, I, I, those users are going to you know use your program like I use Photoshop like. I use Photoshop almost, almost my whole life, right? So, 
and I keep wanting to use it because it's a good tool and it gets updated and has new features that matches other people's desires for what I can do with this thing, right? So there's another side to this game that we haven't even pushed, with, which is just schools all over the place, uh, you know, especially, of course, places where you speak English because it's English, lang English, English language in, in the game, right? But mm. it could be tra translated and it, 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 it could even go to Danish schools or I don't know, Chinese schools, wherever you want to put it. And you can then use the game to teach level design in the most simple matter uh, because the game is so emotional in that way. There's not many things, but it's a lot of emotions because the enemies are burping and farting and shouting and they look, <laughs> they, 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 they are angry with you. You don't, you don't know why, but you just jump on their head to make them go away. and. There's a lot of emotions all the time. It's very oversaturated. It's very juicy. It's that's like the brand of the game. It's a quirky, juicy, too effectful platformer where you just press one button, button, and it will bam, bang, explode, and shake the screen, and I don't know what, and <clears throat> just to make sure that uh, it's very little effort to get a lot of feedback from the game. And that has worked extremely well. But that was like the thing we have been working on for the most part of the game for over 24 months mm. almost every day is is how to get in the, in the, in a, like this cluster of like like games that are just two dimensional and these damn platforms like how do you give a feeling where people will laugh and remember something and we just spend so much time also from all the experience from our own you know time playing 2D platformers basically my whole life and our whole lives and, and the team so we have so much experience of like how fast we wanted to go and it was definitely a risk making this fast like a, a game because you can actually get the same kind of speed and pace almost like in sonic but just in free air you don't need the ramp you don't need the loop you, you can even get the fast uh, really quick manure uh in in air etc et and combo the the different uh, sort of like a skateboard game or snowboard game where you combo things in air to make sure it's even more dynamic the game and that, that that's that has been working extremely well and that's so community based that development it has been a lot about pinging if you know back and forth with the users like how do you feel like the jump now and they're like nah, a little less and ah, and and this guy wants a little more but he's only one and four other people want so it has been adjusted a lot to the dynamics of the the community and what we felt uh, and and because we are you know we're very creative in the process when we develop the main game. So, so we we just played the game like almost like sixteen or twenty hours for every day for many days. So we just really got into the game, made sure that the core users from the community also knew all about the game. So so we had a huge group of people who just were able to optimize the essence of the two D. A platformer feeling you know it's so important that it's solid that's why this new update with the tiles was so crucial because it kind of messed with this whole doctrine and conservative way of you know this, we, everybody is looking at the game now already like ah this is the feel so just this new way of you know sloping and running over the slopes and etc it was just really challenging to make sure it sort of mold it, like melded in and it worked and uh, actually just released the update uh, half an hour or an hour before we got on the call so uh there are already some users uh, making some twitch videos right now uh, to to show what they what they experience uh, testing it out so yeah it's a lot of fun <laughs> well I'd, I'd i'd say you could go even a step further i mean you've talked a lot there about the the expression people can they can they can use the game to exhibit so you know the level design and uh, a lot of that but what I found <clears throat> unique about your game, and I don't think this is an accident, is the tailorability of not just that, but the experience as a whole. Like, the way that the game is set up, you you can get used to, as a gamer of, uh, you know, like I say, the, the bigger titles or even indie titles where it's pretty rigid. You boot up the game, you press start, you get used to the controls, you play it through, and then maybe you'll play it through a couple more times to get some unlockables, or uh, you, maybe you enjoy the experience, you don't want to play through again. With yours... Uh -huh. If you're not a good platformer, you can play the easy modes and they are super easy and they get you used to the mechanics. You can then start building up. And then once you're an adept or even an expert, then you start, hey, hang on a second, I think I can create a good level. It's such an, a, a, an encouraging, immersive experience. And I think that that's, that's what's really cool. unique that's about the cool. game. So, uh, thanks for, for putting it like that. Uh, thanks. Uh, that's like my... my that's my goal definitely with the game uh that that's super nice uh, you put it that way um we've seen uh, users who are 
into different kinds of games. Uh, we have a Twitch streamer, uh, Craze, uh, from also from the community, who, who who's, who's like one of the best uh, dashers out there. And when he began, he 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 sort of spoke a little bit about how he was used to speed running a bit. You know that also the word speed run and speed running is of course extremely important to dash because mm. there's only one rule, only one rule in the game that you win the diamond in the level by completing the level the fastest in the world right mm. so, so that's like the only mechanic for now at least so um the world so, record tag so, as well by the way beautiful because it really does emphasize look this is if you if you even get close to that time you must be mm -hmm. pretty goddamn good because it's a world it, it feels special when you get close to it or break it it feels it feels great and it is, and it is special, and it's super good. You 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 feel that it, it like the feeling is the feeling of yeah, this unique, and it is the world's fastest time. And we we especially when you made the review, it was about the time it was about to fade out a bit. But we just had some weeks where we had the, like the peak of the activity on on our server and in our game, right? So so there there's always new names. Like it would not be the same if we were only like three people playing. And it was always always the same names, you know, at the top of the screen. You can see who's number two and three, etc. So indeed, yeah. So we really have really have a mix of new names, and some people even call, you know, they it it based, the game just ba basically takes the name the string. Uh, the, the little text uh, from from what your Steam account name is, right? And it just it, like sort of gives you that name in Dash uh, for now, at least. Indeed, yeah. And, and some of the the users, uh, even on Steam, because they are you know streamers and they're working hard on it and be professional. They some of them are, are even called their Twitch channel uh, like a like a URL. So that URL comes in the, in the title of who has the medal and it it becomes this what I think the aesthetics of this is really something that I could never plan but it's something that really makes me smile to see this uh, like your review where I'm looking at a screen behind where I, like, it's not even in the center, but I see these other names and they're these like twitch.tv slash and other, these other names like crazed and all these cool names. And that's something I think is such an important aesthetic of, of, of games today is like all these cool, like people have all their names. And, mm. and it really, it really makes sense. Uh, also, I should say like, if we really, like we've seen some users, uh, what I wanted to say before that, uh, that we have seen some users begin to play and they don't, they know the game is about the platformer and they know they, about the speed run and maybe they're not like speed runners like maybe they're not like 37 years old and speed run i don't know uh, uh mario every day because they did it for their whole life but this guy craze he's uh he's a teenager i think and uh and, and, and he, he didn't grow up and, and he's not really fitting in, in that whole what i call like plus 35 plus 40 uh arena of crazy uh speed runners who are just uh like really insanely good at the games this is a new sort of generation that knows the word speed running yeah. but they don't necessarily know all these old games that we know because we were born like way back so they don't have the time in the catalog and they don't have the the culture to learn about these games but they have enough knowledge about it that when they see the the low resolution in dash and they know that it, it's about going from a to b and they know that the game is designed so that it's fun to do it fast that that that's something that catches a game like a gamer like crazed because he's been streaming like when he does his stream is usually like two three four hours every time so he's been playing this game for a lot more hours than some of the other like titles he has uh, on you know on his um, profile which is triple a titles which you know some triple a titles maybe get you to play two four hours maybe 10 maybe 50 hours but 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 a lot of the dash uh, users the dashers they play dash for as you've seen like plus 40 and that's even the, the like the early version right so 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 a guy like crazed he began and he was good at the game but as he played over some months it was like we even have it on video right we can show his process where he he really becomes so incredibly good at the game mm. and he does some stuff that he could not never imagine to do only two weeks three weeks before so there's something something magical in the game that because it's so molded, so handmade, so really like from day to day observing, uh, testing, feeling, and sort of shaping the game. It's so like it, there's so much focus on the user experience, and it has been so highly in focus from day one that we now have this game that even though you don't consider yourself, even you don't really see yourself as a creative person, you don't even see yourself as a speed runner, but then 20 40 hours later you're one of the best players in the game 
and you, you have made some levels that other people have played for hundreds of times because we are also able to see how many plays a level has, right? So we can see if a play, how many plays, you know. So if, uh, even my, my nephew, he made a level when he was uh, stopping by with my brother who, who came <clears throat> to a reception, you know, sort of uh, an open house where we we're inviting people in to, to try the demo. And we had uh, some people in the, in the living room and, uh, and people were playing and my nephew wanted to make a level. And now that like one year later, that level has been played, I think, well over a thousand times. <laughs> and, 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 and to him, that's, that's really something that like, that's something he goes, you know, to tell his friends. And he's a, he's a 12 now, I think, uh, he's becoming 12. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it just, it, it is really fantastic to have made something that in the beginning was just about, you know, a little bit about maybe the idea about making some levels yourself because that's basically what we were experiencing, the little team we were in the beginning. Like, this is fun, you know, it's fun to make a 2D game, but it's much more fun to make the levels and then then challenge you to beat that time faster, right? So mm. it was such a simple, uh, like, sort of foundation. And it's been done over and over before, even in, you know, Super Mario Maker and in, in Super Meat Boy, there's a level editor. There's so many t 2D platformers with the editors, but we just ended up with a design that i don't think any other game has where you just it, it just it, it it makes it equally easy to learn to be the world's best as it it's equally easy to learn to make a level that's played maybe two thousand times in in a month um that's something which we have proved we have got some some great uh videos from from the users also getting so surprised that it's actually something they you know, they can actually make levels and they want to share the level and, and it's just brilliant. I mean, uh, that's 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 something that we even had like a story mode before and we uh, just commented it out in the scripts because it was even like when you clear the level, you went to the next level mm. and, and and then just a new platform level. And, and, and it was sort of a little story where there was a learning curve and all of this. But, but because of the way that we are brought up in the gaming culture. We're just so used to maybe taking that tutorial and people just did it like almost 100% of all the users took the tutorial and they spend half an hour in that tutorial. And after half an hour of a tutorial going from A to B and you kind of get this feeling inside of your body that, ah, oh, you reached, you reached, you know, you reached the end of it. Ah, oh, you get a cup of coffee now or, you know, you know, chill it out a bit. That, that totally ruined everything in the game because then people would have to have like much more energy energy to go into the world list of world levels and compete there. So by removing the tutorial and this, this first sort of attempt to make a little story mode, then we saw a lot like something very interesting, which is something I could never have dreamed of even that people find their own learning curve within the user in interface where we have at least tried to guide the player to to find the, the list with easy levels or so they can gradually go to even the expert levels after some time. And that's a, that's definitely something which kind of gives uh, an early access title enough juice to get everyone going. But then again, we need we want to, you know, also put an animation about maybe <clears throat> to introduce the player to how beautiful the game is going to be, make it a nice 2D animated sort of cartoon intro and maybe some cutscenes in a little story mode that, that is very short and it's just really obviously the story uh, maybe unlocked at some point. But uh, yeah, now I get, now you got me started, but uh, <laughs> <Carry> <laughs> there's so many ideas were. to it. There's so many <laughs> ideas, right? But, but yeah, we, <clears throat> it's a funny thing. Like it's, it's, it's a very, very special thing to do. And that's why I'm also, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a couple of uh, talks about the, uh, the way that we, we make the core design of the game. Um, like a design talk. I'm doing a couple of them over the next month uh, and it's called um, uh, something like uh, it's in Danish so I'm translating. No, pardon me. Um, it's something about like something like um, over 60 what happens with what happens when over 60 designers make a platformer game. So 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 it's just to make a, a title that is a bit catchy but it's basically about um, making a game where so many people design the levels and if if they do uh, from the early stage then you need to be very good at making a game gradually that makes sure that the players make great levels and we did that very successfully 
Uh, we have over 270 levels or something, even with a lot of them erased because we needed to erase some from the library, right? So, so th this talk is going to be about this very experience, like a lot of uh, that I talked about today, is what happens when you just, like, for real, make the players make the levels and you don't even make your own, like, you don't make sure that new players are going to play a tutorial they even get into some new players even got into levels that are just killing them at like like maybe even you experience some enemies are coming from behind and you don't know <laughs> what is going on um so there needs to be some adjustment adjustment to this of course that's going to be like the, <clears throat> the the sort of end of the talk where we talk about the lessons we learned uh because we want to avoid obviously a, a totally new player the very first level it's just a smack in the ass and you don't know what is going on and maybe you become a bit upset or you become a bit upset about that you can't understand stuff. Um, there's definitely stuff that we need to put in, but the core idea that uh, that the users have naturally generated levels that is also relative to their own uh, skill level, that's something which is super interesting um, because that's why the, the variety is so wide in, in the game. There's such a wide variety because people have made the levels from being having played the game almost the first time other people have made a level when they've played the game over 200 hours so um so that's definitely very real in that sense it takes a lot a lot of time to do and uh, of course it's super precious d data all the the levels that the users have made because they all represent a lot of work that they actually did a level takes uh, between like one hour well over like three two like four hours maybe so it's a lot, a lot of work uh, put in, in all of those levels. And, and then again, some, some levels are just troll levels that people <laughs> made to, to just show something is not working or maybe they just did it to you know, provoke someone else. Or, but even then, then again, those levels are even used by some users who don't know about the story. They jump into the level and they want to, ah, they found a new way. And, and then they don't know that somebody made that level as a troll level. They, they just take it as it is. So, so again, another lesson learned from this is also super, super important with the player feedback in video format. You really need to be able to see what the users see, even when they, when it's not stream. And that's obviously also a lot of work too. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let me, let me jump uh, because, in there because that's an interesting point you just raised. Uh, one of the elements of your design in the, in the, um, cause you have a rating system. Um, which yeah. is again unique to your game, albeit not unique. I mean, Steam is predicated on that, but other games have similar rating systems. What's unique about yours, mm. though, is you have to complete the level to be able to grade it. Now, in your in your experience, you've just mentioned that some people may make a level that's super, uh, that's intentionally hard or nigh impossible. But the thing with that is that the system kind of guards against people from playing those levels if they don't want to, because they won't be rated. That you can't complete them, whereas other levels. They can be completed, so they can be rated in terms of how difficult they are, if people enjoy those, or if they don't. But that's true. <clears throat> but I, actually, we we did experiment with that a bit. But uh, we we actually ended up with um, the player being able to to rate the level without completing it. Oh, okay, fair because, enough. That's an amendment to when um, I reviewed it in that case. Yeah, but I, I think I don't know if we changed it after, but it's something that we we did experiment a bit with. But it was uh, it was something that the users found really, really like they almost got a bit mad. Uh, oh, really? They, they couldn't do it because they wanted uh, to have the to be unable to complete it and then go. Ah, I don't like this level. How do you but feel it's, about it's, that? It, <clears throat> Well, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I actually I want I, I wanted them to go with that idea, so I'm really I'm really pleased with that. But it's because it's, we're lacking something in the design of the very rating, because we all know from Facebook and all of these things that are so much to learn from the whole rating uh, experience. So for now, we started with uh, what we know to be the most simple one, which is either plus one or minus one. Or zero, right? A zero mm. doesn't do anything. It just passes you and, and go, goes on, and it doesn't record your um, your rating, right? So, 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 yeah, I, I really like that. But we wanted to make a actually when before we did, before we released uh, the early access, we even had a branch on the the Git where we wanted to um, where we had a lot of plans with the with the rating system, and there was something not working on the server and the, the pinging back and forth, but. We, we have a dream about making this very beautiful rating system as well, where you can rate with uh, icons such as like 
maybe uh, something showing that were too many spikes or it was too easy or it's just too many enemies or so it's more in detail so when you when you raid up then you raid up in a certain way and when you raid down then you raid down in a certain way and we even wanted to make it like like us like um what is it called like the, the slot machine where you pull the lever uh where these are uh, things in the little window where you not so it was random and you pulled the the, the the handle but 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 you could just um sort of fill in these slots uh where like what was your rating based on so if it's a good rating it's maybe um one icon for the good flow and one icon for being good uh, difficulty uh, and maybe if it's, a, it's a, if it's super super good flow maybe you put all of the icons like that flow icon clang 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 and it was maybe on, on the other hand if, if it was a not a not a good rating it was like it was just too many spikes and it was evil and then you put two spikes and then a an angry face and then you know okay it was definitely a kaiso level as we call it like a, <laughs> a level which is just uh, made intentionally to be so hard that you want to finish it but you don't like you don't want to do it but then again you want to do it right like <laughs> there are some people who are like also we can see on the stream like they they, they get upset because they just can't let it go and their, their mom <laughs> mo mother is calling them like we got we you know dinner and they're like yeah and then it's a kaiser level and then you know it's it you know it can be done because once it's uploaded it it means that the at least the the, the creator has completed the level right so mm. So you know it's possible, and I, I remember watching on a stream where Crazed again, a very nice, a very good uh, streamer and a great player. He, uh, he 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 just insisted on playing one of the characters because there are five characters, and each of them have their their own stats, like uh, a game, like a like um, in other games, like a racing games, where each car has their own attributes. One has very high speed, but it's not very easy handling the car, etc. So, so he had he, he chooses this character in Dash, which is uh, Cleo, and she's very fast. Her horizontal speed is super fast, but mm. uh, she's a little she has a little uh, lower uh, her, her jump is not as powerful as the others. So she has some other like uh, challenges. So, but he he's really insisting on using this character, and he she is so so fast, right? And uh, then on the stream, the creator of the level was watching, and his name was is concerned. He's also a part of the team. And and he made some of the first levels so hard levels and um, and then uh, then then he, he he said on the on the chat he, he said crazed I don't know if, if if this level is actually beatable with Cleo because some of the levels are just not you, you just can't beat them with a certain type of hero right so 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 he was like I don't even know because you spent like maybe half an hour now and i don't i don't i just want to say that I, I made the level and i'm sorry if you're going to spend three hours and it's not you're not able to do it and crazed was like no i i want to complete it with cleo because cleo is <laughs> that's you know cleo power you know that, that's his character you know that's that's what he really wants to show sure. the world so after maybe two hours or something playing the same level the same level for two hours he did it in the end and I remember watching the stream, and I haven't felt the same like uh, because uh, like it's been years since I watched a match on TV or something where I, I got up in the chair and really you know started like you know, like clenching my hands and like shouting at the sky and be like yeah, and uh, because I love that element in sports, I love it so much uh, like having your favorite character or team or or, or a single individual in, like in tennis or something. I love that, and it's just been so many years since I, I experienced that and. And uh, in concerned in the chat was like, yeah, because he he got pretty concerned that it wouldn't work because he felt bad, and that that's so magical, and it, it requires so many technologies, <laughs> like uh, everything from the streaming technology, the the chat platform technology, the game development platforms we have, and all of this, which is that just comes together in this soup of 2018, 90, 20 goodness. Uh, and got super emotional on the stream and like make, made the you know clips and, and thumbnails and gifs and it was like yeah and spread it on the discord like look everyone and here's a like a little gif of uh, um of crazed uh, making like coming like going through this impossible level and people like oh, that's impossible and <laughs> this whole this this whole like sports uh, uh, side to it is also extremely important and and that that's what we wanted uh, for sure and it, uh, it's just it's such a like it's such a blessing here in, in uh, you know in 2019 to be able to have all these things come together and then actually find these individuals who just play the game as a as a real sport 
and and I have some some gifs of people throwing their hands in the air like they won <laughs> one really proper won the world record. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah, seen some of the clips. Of they're fun. very good, and that's 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 awesome to see. That passion. It's clear that that passion that you've invested in the game is starting to. It's it's like osmosis. They they're getting it from the game from you. That's a hundred percent clear. Um, mm -hmm. Let me ask you, because. I've done, I've done, you know, not at all creepy level of research to find out, you know, that, you know, your your last name is uh, Overgaard, I believe. Yes, yeah, true. There you it's go. Jakob. Uh, yep, yep, yep. yep. Didn't not at all creepy level of research there. Um, you're also obviously awesome. into your music and your design. When yeah. and and by the way, uh, props on. Uh, I believe it's it's uh, the label is Lion Bay, but it's Rockets featuring Momox, uh, the first track on your. Your, uh, I'm not familiar with. What yeah, is, what it's is a SoundCloud. What is a sound no, it's a SoundCloud. It's true that they speak of this. This SoundCloud yeah. thing. Huh, I should get. I'm going to get one of my one of my many children yeah, to tell me what that is later. Um, yeah. But when it comes to game design versus music <laughs> and art, I mean, I've got a little bit of background in music and art, but I, I just wasn't talented enough to follow either one of those ah, let, things Let's up. talk about it. Awesome. I knew it. I knew there was something <laughs> spe special about you. Well, uh, well, um, but Let's with, bring it on. With music and art, um, those are very, uh -huh. um, they're very finite experiences because you go through the process of finding the inspiration or the topic, your muse. You go through the process of honing it, crafting it, making it. You produce it, you release it, and then it's up to the people to interpret it. Game design, mm -hmm. at least especially with your game, is an almost unending process because you've released the game or you've, you've part released it, but you're still mm -hmm. honing it, you're still crafting it, you're still adapting it. How does the experience yeah. of game design compare to, to your... And you're a very talented artist, by the way. I, I love some of your designs and the animations. They're brilliant. But how do they Thanks, compare? Thanks, Alan. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks. Well, it's funny. I, I, sometimes I say, like, imagine, uh, imagine that, like, when I, when I speak about what I do in games and with games and producing them, etc., to people who are really far from the industry and who don't... They may, maybe they have never really played a game themselves, etc., then I then I usually say like imagine you made a song and it's with it's with your guitar and it's your vocals right so you just made a song and you, you released it on SoundCloud or YouTube or something where some place where people could listen to it and give you some feedback like uh, usually in music especially when it began with MySpace and Facebook and all of that it was usually a lot of like oh it's nice and oh I love this and and, and I don't know what. And uh, games is just known to be like this lot more like open critique, uh, and it has come over in the music industry as well. So, so imagine that you that you that you made a song, you put it up, and then people write, "I love this song. It's such a great intro. I mean, ah, oh, the voice it comes so well along, and the verse is just great, and the chorus. But then the solo, like the solo when it comes, I was just imagining it like, like imagine it was like twice as long." And then other people start saying, yeah, I love the solo. Or maybe some, somebody writes, oh, it should be a saxophone. And a third, people, th third person is writing, oh, I don't think it should be that at all. And then the musician picks up the feedback and then puts up a new song the next month, which has a new solo in it or something. It, it is some, it's a bit similar in a way, but then again, it's not. But just to make you understand, understand that that's the process that you do with the game. Mm. Uh, at least the way I see a, a reasonable way to do it, uh, to present something uh, in, in the best quality it can be uh, within the technology, etc., and what I can do and stuff. So, so in the music, uh, I ha I, like I, I've been, uh, been doing a lot of music where it was the opposite, right? So you put something out, and if someone has anything to say about it, uh, it's usually something which you ignore or remove, or it's just something we like. I remember not really getting the common thing uh, design and why it should be there. I just sometimes put it off on some stuff I, I put up on YouTube, etc. I was like, why? But 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 then again, we, I, I'm, I'm thinking about if I'm to release some new music and and go and play the music, perform the music. I would definitely love to do that to reach some kind of community that immediately grasps what I'm doing and who I am and who also likes to give a bit of feedback with everything they know and it's not at all about you know the relationship between customer and, and the producer mm. it's much more the the relationship between the artist and then people who wants to be like you or an artist too or they their brother is an artist or their mother is an artist or they this word artist has just become something which is a bit maybe too widely used in the sure. sense that 
uh, that but because because there are some people who really want to be that in a sense and it could be an art with you know the way you are with your partner or uh, it's just a very uh, <clears throat> special way of seeing something I think so uh, so it doesn't matter if it's in music or in the games I think when you really get the grasp of the thing where the point is just to do it and not for anything else uh, if you can get to that point in some way I think it doesn't matter if it's music or the graphics or whatever it there is some trade-offs maybe but then again it's also a lot about network and networking and especially nowadays um, because uh, people are just uh, really quick uh, to establish new networks mm. all the time so it's not like <clears throat> 10 years or 20 years ago where the music business was selling you know uh, records almost like um, twenty dollars a piece of the counter <clears throat> which was basically as much money as you were making on the weapons market <laughs> so th those days are just over now and the market and the technology changed but uh, yeah I, I think the things are melting together and especially the kids will not see the difference between I think the kids are like 15 or 10 or younger they will not know the difference between the TV medium and the internet medium and the games medium I hope that it will be a bit more put together in a way so it's not as confusing as people in my generation where it's really hard to both do music and games and stuff sure. because it's it's just so many hats like you know uh, like when you also do the, the podcast here and you go to explain and maybe you your new uh, partner and you meet their parents and like what do you do and you're like i do this and that and <laughs> ah. I, i've just uh, you know that right yeah, and I, eventually I I, yep, yep, yep. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and, and and because you're so proud about it then like I, I just continued to do it there was a small like i remember that small like tiny period where i tried not to say it and be like lie a bit about it maybe, yep. yeah i'm looking at this and those two months or two weeks or whatever it was it was just not fun it was much more fun the other thing to just uh, when i was uh, like i remember when i was like 18 19 or 20 or something and i just that was just that just became my fun in the very boring maybe family get together was mm. just to really from the bottom of my heart try to speak of all the things i was thinking about doing or i was doing and people were like yeah 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 but but i learned eventually that it's nice to focus on one thing like i i, I look at who i'm with and i'm like hmm they may be most into maybe the animations that I do, or they may be most, maybe they like to hear about the podcast that I was just in, and, and it's about the games. And so, so I think eventually you need to focus. And I think that multi artist sort of description is just something everybody is just is born to be now. I think you have to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of it is some kind of artistic approach. Uh, you see so many people who, who spend time on, you know, uh, thinking about the body too and the, the yoga thing and everything. And you can say what you want about it, but it's, I think, a much more artistic approach to yourself and the world than, I don't know, maybe watching too much TV or, you know, uh, fighting with someone. It's, it's, uh, there's some nice stuff going on in the world, I think, now where uh, it's more natural to do more stuff. Uh, but yet again, it can be hard to find the time in a space of a get-together or, or party or something like that to explain what how all these things come together right like mm. uh, you do the podcast and your v reviews and you have your past in in, 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 in like with entertainment and stuff and th there's just so much to tell because we have so much experience with it mm. um, yeah that's it's well, crazy right you touched on it there it's interesting how you go through that period where you're maybe 16 17 through to maybe 20 21 22 where people are actually reasonably encouraging when it comes to your expression of art be it music uh, even game design. But when you get to a certain point, music and art still retains something, I feel. Like, people can appreciate a painting or a song just off the cuff, say, oh yeah, I, I quite like that, but they don't really have to invest sort of much time. Whereas if I, if it's you true. T say, it's I'm true. a game developer, right, I have to put at literally hours upon hours, not only making it look good and sound good, I've got to make sure it works. And then once it works, I've got to make sure it's fun. I've got to make sure people have got a reason to pick it up and play. And yet, it's so much less glamorous and more is put on the artistic <laughs> oh, and the, yeah, the, the music, it. I think, That's true. than, That's than, true. than the, the, the blood, sweat and tears that goes into producing something that people can experience multiple times. It's, it's very odd, isn't it? It's 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 so true, and it's also when you when you mention it like that, it's really odd how I have come to do both of the things because it is genuinely something that I felt that I wanted to do since I was 
three years old. Mm. And I remember playing Gianna Sisters on the Commodore and on our huge TV. And I remember it was just nobody around me understood what I experienced when I played that fucking game at that uh, in that apartment with like uh, living with my parents when I was <laughs> like four or six years old. It was and so many people know this feeling that I'm trying to describe that 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 when you look back at it, it was like you just want to make a five minute long techno music video with 120 FPS of you with uh, getting electric shock and whirlwinds and tornadoes through the room while your parents are eating a steak or something like <laughs> it, it. It is proper insane when you think think of it like uh, because it was a new technology that my parents didn't know anything about it. They just gave it to me like sugar, like they, they don't know anything about it, but it's pretty uh, fucking <laughs> crazy. But uh, but that was the th same thing with uh, with 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 the with the game so so i i just recently found it when i moved to another place uh I went through some of my really old uh, stuff down like some uh, the bottom of stuff and i actually found that uh drawing i did my very first pixel art drawing i did it must have been in on an amiga or something like from 90 90 or something mm. so i'm from 83 so i must i'm about seven years old but but what i drew there was ironically <laughs> uh the same platformer sort of Thing as I have been doing now uh, and I really believe in that like I really really believe and I encourage people to think that way too that there is definitely something in your life where you were thinking ah oh, that's odd how like I, w I really wanted to do that when I was five years old and maybe you continued to do it and maybe somebody stopped you but I really think <laughs> that you are aware of uh, these things that you want to do mm. so uh, that, that that explains a bit why i'm doing this in such a passionate way with the games because there is no tour bus with no fancy stuff or nothing like there's no free beer or nothing no free treats anywhere and nobody knows really who you are mm. uh, except from of course the awesome community but but then again it's uh i think in music it's not that in, I, I don't really perform in music uh, at the moment at least uh, where i'm doing this thing where i'm in the center of things or producing stuff with my face on the front etc mm -hmm. but but it's something that i really wanted to like i, I have been in some projects where the one i've been working with etc have, have had a wide um, you know reach etc but i just i think i needed some time where i was a bit behind where i was enjoying this incredible thing that it is i think on, on, on discord and other places where you just totally lose your personality and ego in a way uh, uh, you you don't really have anything to give except from what you write on that keyboard and you know like 90 percent of all the avatars are not people's faces and you don't know their gender even you like the age even like that that's pretty crazy sometimes mm. in our community i was surprised some of them were so young because i was like wow like whoa and you're from this non-english speaking country and you write this well and, and you're like like 14 and wow like wow that's amazing and you're up at half past one on a tuesday and you're 16 and you're playing the game and uh, that's exciting um, but but then again i think in music uh, there's been a lot of um, community in music but it has mostly been the labels i don't think many musicians probably managed to there are some of course like uh, i don't remember the names now but some of the ones who really came out and became huge mainstream artists in the beginning of the tens like in 11 12 or something like that mm -hmm. i th i think uh, some of them really nailed the like some of the first examples of of of, of uh, successful marketing to the millions or maybe even billions of people uh who discovered them um and uh, yeah, I I, th I think um, I really th I really think the the music and games are so different from each other, but I think they're coming together in a way, and I think we will see uh, both things being created in a more free and community driven driven way. Because mm. when the market is so oversaturated, even when the robot robots there are, eventually there, there are going to be robots who make music and robots who make games. Indeed, yeah. And, and, and when in 10 years they do that and they even start to multiply and da da da, then the market would be so oversaturated that some people will even try to ban the games that I don't know and that I will melt together eventually. It would be so extremely oversaturated that people will 
be so hungry, especially the ones who were born like five years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. they, they will be so incredibly hungry and, and, and looking so deeply everywhere for what we were just born with naturally, like, you know, going to some house in this some vacation, playing cards and no phones and stuff. They, they will, this will be so mm -hmm. exotic and so utopic to them that uh, I think that everybody at some point has to step out of the label or the publisher and be in some way in contact with these people. You see some, like even Travis Scott or some of the biggest music stars in the world, they, because they are younger than we are and, and, and they are from a different time already, from their age, when they were born, they are so used to being and, and, and being close to the fans that it's just not even something they decide. It's just something you do do naturally. Sure. You roll you roll down the window in your limo and you take out your hand with all your tattoos on it and and the and the fans just crave that and they they need that more than ever uh, because exponentially as well as uh, the demand for the also the supply of games is just and and music and movies are just exponentially growing. But I really think that the need is exponentially growing as well for the mm. originality. Where it all comes from. That's why Quentin Tarantino keeps selling movies, even though he doesn't use the new technology. Um, there's some, there's something to that. I think uh, it, it's interesting. That's why I'm also making the games because uh, it is also performing something to get the feedback. Mm. That's the same in music as well. Um, also, I think if you're very like passionate um, graphic artist or animator or movie creator, it's the same. You need the feedback. Remember that <clears throat> uh, there was some uh, some uh, stories about huge directors like Hitchcock and, and other great directors, they sometimes snuck in, into the, the to movies just to watch how people uh, just watch the people. Uh, and that's the same in games. So that's, I think, the most fun part about everything we talked about today, uh, tonight here, is the, m the most extraordinary feeling is making and giving out your demo or your game and then being so fortunate and so lucky that other people will spend their time playing your game for at least half an hour an hour and then you can see the footage and see how they reacted mm. that's just that's that's the ah uh, that's like uh that's that's just the fix that you need as the developer uh, yeah that's wonderful the, yeah that's that's crazy yeah. well I... so 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 can can you can you tell me just a bit about uh, about some stuff you did re like you've 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 done in like maybe in the entertainment industry or what you've been doing uh, outside of the podcast and, and the reviews? Ah, uh, very very rudimental. Um, uh, just to give you a bit of background on me, I um I, I have a lot of what you might like to refer to as fuck it moments in my life, where I'll go Great. fuck it. You know, I'll have ideas and I'll have aspirations and I'll have dreams. But I'll I'll put them on the back burner. Yeah, I, I can do that another time. I can I I mean I'll give you an example. I have a painting in my office where okay. I uh, have a canvas of the theater of broken dreams all sketched out. The only difference is that it's going to be superhero based. It's a commission for a buddy of mine, and I'm going to rig it so that it's got the wow. lights so that it rig, so that it has the um, the, uh, the 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 light that says Luther's. It's going to be uh -huh. it's going to be great. I've been working on that for a number of years uh -huh. <laughs> because it's just it, it moves in very small bursts when I have inspiration to do so. However, wow. Wow, YouTube, that's awesome. YouTube was a fuck it moment though. YouTube was something I toyed with for doing for a long time. Uh -huh. Didn't do because it's ah, ah, do I really have anything to say? Do I really, can I really do anything that's worth watching? Ah. And then I just had a fuck it moment. I, I remember uh -huh. watching, I think it was a KSI video. And uh -huh. I went, well, I can do better than that. Ah, <laughs> fuck it. And I just put together a video and it sucked. But to your point, it was my, that was my education. That was people coming out of the woodwork to say, hey, by the way, I mean, I really like some of the things you're doing, but you need to stop that or you need to do this or maybe add this. And to your <laughs> point, it's, it's, it feels like it runs in To your point about how medium are amalgamating because Game design and content creation uh, almost work hand in hand because the content creators are constantly adapting to the games you're making and how you're producing them. But at the same time, you're adapting your games to be more friendly to that market. So there's an almost symbiosis that's going on there. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, why I think it's interesting about your game in particular because, to your point, you've got 
the names of the gamers constantly reminded at the top of the level. The interactivity with your game is almost peerless. The fandom that you have is uh, unreal. I mean, there's not, almost not a negative thing to say about your game. And I, I think that's what shone through with me, and that's why, I mean, just this is just, this is just between me and you. There's no one else listening right now, right? 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 This is just between uh -huh. me and you. Uh, yours okay. is probably the best game I've played. I don't think there's anything that's, that's come close in terms of an overall package. But what I loved most was your passion. And that's why it's interesting to see that you don't just do games. Your creative passions come out in your art, in your music, in your interact, in your social media presence, in the fact that you listen to people and you feed off their passion. It's a real breath of fresh air to see, I have thanks, to tell man. you. Thanks, man. You too, you too. Um, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, man. That's really kind of you to say. Uh, you too, for sure. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm super hyped and feeling super good uh, talking to you here. And, uh, and uh, I immediately uh, also, I've, I've been watching so much uh, YouTube for the last uh, <laughs> five, six, seven years. And uh, I must say it as well uh, to you and everybody, everybody who's listening as well. Uh, um, we have we have a really good uh, guy here with us. Uh, his name is. Uh, can I say your name? Of course. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, we got Lorne here, and uh, he he's a guy who inspired me also to, to just spend my evening here uh, x hours uh, in the dark uh, on the dark countryside <laughs> where I sit in my mansion of development uh, here all alone. But uh, tonight, not alone, not as alone. I'm with Lorne, and uh, I I definitely wanted to quote your review as well with your. <clears throat> great aesthetics and a great uh, way of putting stuff which i did also <clears throat> so it was improved yeah, really, it was improved you, you really, visually by the gameplay really, in the background my friend so i i take only part <laughs> credit for that no but uh, but uh, it inspired me i love this uh, this is the way that i this is why i do this without having any certainty of any budgets or payrolls or anything because i'm 35 and i'm old enough i mean jesus was 30 uh, when he knew the, what everything was about right so uh, <laughs> but uh, but but i'm 35 so at least i know as well that this is what everything is about like if you're younger maybe you're listening and you're like what which what, what the, what's the shit about and what is talk what is he talking about what is his art and what is it all about and if you really want to do it eventually you just need to really learn uh the 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 good stuff like i'm here as i said far out on the countryside and because of the technology i can sit and talk to talk to to lauren and to you guys and everybody who's here and i can do that because uh yeah because of the vibe and because i you can i've, I've also watched so many twitter gifs etc and, and notifications <laughs> that i i can see sometimes just in the just in the first second of whatever it is it's like ah yeah this is good oh i'm gonna share share this with everyone yeah, yeah i'm gonna make some gifts too yeah uh, maybe there and there and two two hours later it was like oop that was a good content creator <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that definitely that you can quote me on that a good con content creator uh, he makes a developer or a publisher uh, make at least uh, 10 gifts and loses track of time and forgets lunch uh, that's for sure that's uh, that's what it does <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean i i tell you to stop but i don't want you to just just no, keep going with the definitely. plays um you don't, I, I, definitely don't have to <laughs> couple more questions if it's if it's okay because this here's the thing I, uh -huh. uh, I, I, I'm naturally inquisitive by nature, so I hope you appreciate that I, I just want to ask everything. But I, I do yeah. want to try and... You, you have the rest of your life to live, so I don't want to ask you everything. Let okay, me, that's kind. Let me... Let me uh, it's really kind, sir. Ah, well, you know, I do, I do my best. I, I, I do what I can, you know, that's all we can do. That's uh, all we can do, right? One, one thing that I, I want to get your take on just from the game itself, and then I do want to ask you a more general question. As far as yep. the game... Even though I, I, I think I could probably guess, having listened to you talk as passionately as you have about the game, what are you proudest as a result of Danger Action Speed Heroes? Is, it, is there an element of the game itself that you're proud that you overcame, achieved, produced, or are you proud of, the, of what you've created in terms of the community? Uh, because it, um, it's, it's, it's really, again, unique. I, I can't think of another game that I've played that has such a... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but it, devoted is the only word that comes to comes to mind because they're just there's just a constant stream of new content within a game, which is almost you know Minecraft, sure, but Minecraft was kind of in of itself, you know, a fluke. No one saw that coming. 
You've taken mm -hmm. a very well-worn genre that no one should expect anything from because platformers mm -hmm. are so by the numbers by as a general rule mm -hmm. of thumb. But you've made mm -hmm. something that made me leave the game going, I've genuinely experienced something new there. Oh, that's great. That's really cool, man. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say that um, I would say that what, I, what I'm most proud of is definitely uh, something like this, like that we can we can like one year ago that was just two years ago there was nothing like and now there's a whole lot of things and it brings us together. That's what I want to do. Uh, and also in the mu in music, that's what I always done when I've done done my my stuff and and worked with music and performed. It was always the the you know the shaman you know uh, even when I was singing uh, not at all any spiritual music in that sense but uh, hip hop music or whatever like uh, playing music on stage. It was always to bring a message to bring together. <laughs> uh, I've always just uh, wanted that, and that's the same in the game. Uh, and when I, you know, I, I played games. Uh, I, I, honestly, I, I played a lot of games where I did not do any uh, connection with players in game. Mm. But when in the way I'm raised, the time when I, you know, the time that I learned about games and I was five, six, seven, eight years old, I was so I'm so fortunate to have a brother who's three years older than me. So I always had someone before me who who could you know find out the cool stuff and know how to do the stuff. So I always had this, uh, you know, I had this always had this connection. I always talked about the games. I couldn't get to the game because one, it was my brother's computer or something. So I talked a lot about the games with other friends, and we even made our own games, uh, kind of copied those games to paper because we didn't have a computer. So. So, so I really think it's, I, I, I love all kinds of gamers and games, but I think if I can give something and be most proud of something to a process in any production, it would be to give something that makes people communicate and even better, make them communicate across um, other barriers, uh, such as uh, nations or uh, age gaps or whatever. That's 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 what I'm most proud of. Mm. So we are always happy to see uh, to see new, especially uh, female players uh, who we recognize on the name or the you know the, their stream or something, uh, because it is super important to us, uh, to me and the project also. To at least we get the creative part, we get all this community, but we also want to make sure that it's similar modern to all the other technologies we are using, so that we have a wide variety of uh, you know uh, people from all over the world and, and ages and stuff. And that's uh, that's why we want to land the game, uh, and that's why I'm super proud of where we're at because it has got a positive review, and people are ha happy with it, and sort of acknowledge and get the point of it, and everything is working. But when that is settled and is released, then my dream is to to then do something with the game to translate to other languages, go on travels to other parts of the world where maybe games are not as usual or whatever. Um, that's that's something that I'm proud of in, in this production. That even though it's a game and you, you can shoot a little gun and da da da, then it's still this this more you know uh, worldly or international aspect and, and and more social aspect of it. Mm. Uh, because I've I've never never uh, of course like many people uh, haven't uh, I've never looked at games as some people say as to as they rob your time you don't learn anything and stuff. It's definitely not true. It's not in my uh, experience at all. Um, I learned English from Maniac Mansion by LucasArts. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my first English, I learned um, <clears throat> refrigerator and chainsaw because those were the first <laughs> objects that were in the first ro room that you entered. And, and uh, it was funny to my teacher that I knew those words. So yeah, uh, I, that's, I'm just so fortunate to have really been born in sort of the what is it called like the, the eye of the, the the tornado like the the culprit or was it what is it called like the the point in history where a guy like me at the perfect timing um just experienced um this whole community within the gaming and the music on the cassette tapes and the, i don't know discs and all of that well, you were, you're right in that cusp of so being able to experience the experience the technology but also appreciate and be able to utilize it whereas people after probably don't have that appreciation for what we're able to do now and the people before for whatever reason just don't have the the the, the ability to be able to utilize it you're right you were born exactly. right in that pocket where it's exactly listen i can't believe we've got miniature phones that i can yeah i can dude i could only ever see that on star trek when i was a kid now i can yeah. do that that's that's crazy yeah man that's that's so good man that's uh i don't i don't know like i, I not to judge you either i don't know how old you are or anything but uh 
but I, but, uh, but yeah, when I referred to before uh, that you remember without the living without the phone, I, I'm, I, I I'm, I'm, you, I'm you know. 30 this year and uh, uh, I had to explain, and this is a true story, I had to explain what dial up was to a work colleague because she thought they were a Korean pop band. Yeah. And I went, what? And she went, yeah, dial-up, isn't that... Uh, the... No, that's how you used to connect to the internet. What do you mean? You had to press a little button, you had to wait for the sound to stop, and then you could... Oh, and you had to make sure that you disconnected your phone. Why? Well, because you couldn't use it. And it was this weird process of having to explain, look, we, we, God didn't create Wi-Fi on the eighth day. All right? Yeah. He... He left yeah. that to us to figure out, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's it's oh, yeah. it's weird, but you're right because we. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit younger than you, but I, I remember being a kid, and to your point, there was. I mean, to to kind of relate to you a little bit, you obviously drew pixel art. My first drawing that I can remember finishing and giving to someone, I copied the Earthworm Jim cover. Oh, yeah. I loved Earth that game so gym. much. I had to sit down and I would. I want to. I want to memorize. I could probably draw that cover for you right now. Yeah. I drew it so many times. Can you do that? Draw that drawing and post it on Twitter. <laughs> that would be so fucking cool. Get, oh, because I remember <laughs> because he was so. He's leaning into the camera. He's got the gun in the one hand. He's got the booger pucking out of his oh, yeah, backpack. Yeah. The other. He's got a massive grimace on his face. One eye is big and discolored. I can remember almost every inch of that picture. But. I remember thinking, ah, oh, I want to, I want to make that. I, I don't want to just draw this. I want to, I want to make that one day. And to your point, when you were younger, you're looking at things and you're going, do you know what? This is nice playing. I want to do this though. This is, I want to be in, I don't know how I want to be involved yet, but I want to be involved. I want to do this. And yeah. there's a, I, I genuinely fear this, and you might share this, or you might not. There's a generation of kids that are going to grow up not having that desire because they won't, they won't know what they, they won't know what that desire. Wait a minute, I could do that. Well, yeah, why not? Oh well, I just kind of want to take pictures of myself and post them on Instagram. But mm -hmm. yeah, but don't you want to create? Don't you want to make someone feel something? Like with mm -hmm. with what you create, that that's uh, if, even if you don't want to make them feel, inform them or or uh, enlighten them or improve or enrich their lives in some small. Even if it's through your experience, just educating people, that that mm -hmm. feels like it, mm -hmm. it might be. I mean, I hope it isn't, and maybe that's being pragmatic. But I, but, but I, I think no, I think I think uh, I think pragmatic or not. I think uh, definitely within the next uh, fourth, like five, four or five years or something, we're gonna experience uh, what we already are experiencing now. I don't know if your your close family or maybe you have a nephew and, uh, or someone younger as well and close to you or uh, um, it, it's just so obvious to me that there's this new layer of, of stress and misunderstandings between parents and, and children and it is so much to do with the technology also just like in the 60s and 70s with the record players and mm. uh, it is just something that is just happening again in that sense and I think the ones who are I think the kids just like in any generation the kids who have parents who are fearless and who are teamsters with their kids and believe that the kids can do what they want i think that they're lucky and that, that they will be able to survive just like in any other generation but mm. it's going to be even harder i think year after year also with the bad state of the, the body also linked with the bad lifestyle of so many you know of, of the younger and etc it's it's just going to be such a crazy um, rebel period. It's like a, it's like a version, like a nineteen sixty nine uh, rebel times version two point oh, where you just have a lot more drugs and you have a lot more uh, media and a lot more uh, insecurity mm. uh, cre created by a, a, a wave of media being very cynical, uh, even more than we have ever seen. Um, and also these extreme commercial uh, interests is spreading to all the world, whereas in like 10 years ago, you would never see it in like Cuba or I don't know, some places in Asia or South America, I don't know what, but now it's really gotten a hold of everybody. And everybody is, is really uh, um, uh, accepting the fact that you have your personality and that can be expressed in some way mm. and it's and that we're going to see some freaky freaky that we could never uh, foresee new ways of expressing that and i think mixing that with the robot technology that is really close and definitely going to be next year's 
biggest topic I think in many uh, sectors also in, in industries etc <clears throat> and workplaces and stuff it's when the kids are going to be so close to robots all the time mm. uh, where before it was like a lower middle class or middle class we're going to see this freaky interesting society uh, all already predicted like in the 20s and 30s by writers and and, and you know um so yeah it's going to be interesting uh, i hope that uh, at least the, the things that i'm going to experience and the people and the young young people i'm going to be close to i hope that they are happy with the the the, the inspiration i can give them and, and and i can maybe teach with my talk in some schools and stuff but i really hope for the parents sake <laughs> i hope that they uh, understand that uh the way that everything is so engulfed and so inside of this womb of communication and that uh, that um, that everybody needs to communicate. Mm. And if and, and, and I remember my mother even saying, like, uh, I love my grandparents and my my I, my grandparents were sweet and, and I really have a great impression of them. But my mother, I remember, talked about sometimes that you the kids just just didn't talk uh, when they were by the table eating dinner or something <clears throat> and that's only i don't know maybe uh 60 years ago or something 60 55 years ago and where it's so opposite now that the parents don't even dare to say that you don't need your phone by the table because they're afraid of the, 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 the conflict or whatever mm -hmm. it's really just tapped from one extreme to really the the the, the, the opposite i think but I, I'm resting a bit away from everything now. Uh, I've, I've been here for some time now, and I, I'm a bit away from everything. It's really nice. But if you go to the city, and any city, I think you can really just see, like honestly, you can see so many grown-ups in the trains, etc., just looking at the phones. Uh, where I'm starting to see more and more kids, honestly, yeah. not looking at their phone in in the trains. And it's only the past year where I heard some kids like just not even close to them, but just listened. And I could hear that they said, you know, when some kids talk and you, they don't know any grown up is listening, they speak really freely and they're like <laughs> almost like impersonating a grown up saying, yeah, you know, I don't ever take my phone out now nowadays because I just want it's, to do without the yeah, phone. Yeah, it's the cool thing and to I'm, do. Like, yeah, 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 that's the cool, you know. And that's what kids do. They impersonate the ones that they love, and they and it's usually the other kids. And if just one of those kids have a have a parent or some great influence, then I hope it's going to spread in that way. So once again, that kids will teach the grown-ups what the way of life is, just like in the sixties and seventies. Um, it's, I, think it's gonna, I think it's going to happen again, and hopefully with the, uh, as, as festive and funny uh, of rebellion as the one in the, the 60s and 70s, uh, I hope. That's a good thought. Um, I like that. I, I, yeah. I, I hope that you're right. I genuinely do. Yeah, I, I, I hope to, man. I hope to. I, I'm, I'm seeing it because I'm so aware of this, like you, every day from, from, from morning to, you know, to go to sleep. So I, I sort of start to get the feeling of these, uh, these changes, I think. Mm. Um, um, yeah, I can, I, I, I can see it here and there. I mean, if it, in, if it truly was the case that, that everybody was just so egocentric and narcissistic, and if it was really going to turn to that, then we, I think we would already now be so fed up with it that we would make, I don't know, whatever uh, consequence to that. Because I really feel it's the opposite that the kids I'm at least close to, I feel it's definitely the opposite that that they kind of uh, know that it's not cool to, to be on the phone and not, you know, like, why are you smoking? Why are you on the phone all the time? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Th those are the kind of kids that I, that I experience uh, being close to. But then again, if you go to an institution, you're a teacher and maybe you have a different, uh, you're a bit tired and you see those kids all the time and maybe you're really only doing it because you get getting paid and you don't really care too much about the kids and all you see all day is just these kids and these damn kids are on the phone and the, the bad language <laughs> but i think in reality outside of the institutions i think it's definitely the other way around that the grown-ups are so bored and they don't have energy and they're just spending too much time on facebook and you know and and a lot of the kids are just out playing ball like we did or mm. whatever you know um, so yeah i think all i think actually every year i think it's better with the, with the newer generations um I, I think it's the grown-ups we have to be concerned about, uh, I think. Uh, also, the, the, the grown-ups using their kids to be famous on their own account on Instagram and, and Facebook. And that's just, wow, that's just... That's a, little, a little creepy. Wow. Yeah, a little creepy, that's, but that's, that's, that's crazy, man. No, no judgment, but 
I mean, ugh, there's got to be some point in your life where like, damn, like I, I, I used my kid that way. Damn. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't have kids and I don't have a huge Instagram account, so I don't know. No. <laughs> Yeah, man. A fair play. Well, oh, I, yeah. Just a couple, a couple of other very, very quick things, if you don't mind, as we, uh, as we sure, start, sure. as we start to, to bring this freight train to a, to a close. Oh, a nice train, huh? Ah, it's all right in here. We got, we got tea. Yeah. We got beer. We're good. Yeah, it's um, good. A great Thursday night. Ah, we got to keep, we got to keep people topped up. But let me ask you, just to uh, bring it back to gaming, and uh, yeah, maybe, Let's maybe out you here. What are you uh, What are you playing at the moment? Are you playing any games in your spare time, or are you focused primarily on development and uh, and, and creation? Or do you, do, do you have a sneaky game of something else as a sort yeah, of attention reliever? I do. I certainly do. Um, yeah, uh, I I have a cool, pretty good library. I think. Um, I like games now that I can spend like fifteen minutes to half an hour playing um all, almost like there's a lot of videos that i keep watching on youtube which is like 13 14 minutes long i don't know how i got into this but i'm, I'm in this wave now where that's happening so i i, uh, I like to play like uh, there's a, actually a game that i got uh, when i bought my computer it, it has like it had like a voucher a steam voucher for a game called minion masters and it's actually a friend of mine who uh, develops it or at least uh, a guy that i know from the um, you know the, the community of game developers here in Denmark. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny country, and it's not very uh, many developers who are, you know, crazy and ambitious and, and, and <laughs> wild and, and and fun. So when we kind of find each other, we we really uh, yeah, you really, really hit it off. Yeah, no, sure. notice. Uh, yeah, like yeah, sure. And uh, this guy, uh, I, when I found out that he made the game and his team, they're like 15 people. I was like, wow. And I was like, mm. and I looked at it, it was like, ah, the thumbnails I was like, ah, I don't really know if this is okay. Some cards and some Hearthstone meets Warcraft. I don't know. Ah, But then again, a great example of the age we're living in, a time we're living in that uh, I, I then opened a link somewhere in the game or I don't know where. And it led me to the story behind the creation of the game. And they just wrote in their most beautiful Danish English uh, developer language on their page, their blog, their uh, WordPress blog or something. They wrote uh, how they had squatted a, a, a room in the university where some of them couldn't get in and some of them couldn't get paid out of that and they couldn't find money. So they squatted the room and they stayed there for over, I, I don't know how many months. I'm probably going to say too many. And if Stefan is listening, he's just going to give thumbs up. But uh, but it was, I think it was well over three or four months of development and, and these were just like developers. So some of them were, you know, uh, you know, didn't shower too much, maybe just got <laughs> deep into the programming, etc. So, so the, the, when I read the story, I was like, wow. And I, I did some of this stuff myself in music as well, you know, where you kind of had to get these rooms for free and da da da. It's like, I could really relate to that story, you know, and, and it's like, this is definitely not robots. Wow. <laughs> and I read the sto story about these humans who, uh, you know, just uh, squatted the room and just dreamt so passionately about making this game. And then I wanted to play the game. And that's like my little solitaire uh, thing. It's a multiplayer game, online multiplayer game. So I actually do get to play with a human. And I take a break sometimes during a work day or something, get my mind off it, uh, play, playing that game. That's Minion Masters. It's uh, becoming quite popular, I think, uh, during uh, over this year or two. Um, but uh, I play, um, sometimes I play, uh, let me see, um, I've played Frostpunk recently. Uh, have you heard about Frostpunk? I have not, no, tell me about it. Frostpunk is a very beautiful game, I think, by a Polish developer, um, looking very, very, uh, like, super crisp. It's a great example of how this, yeah, I think it's actually called a uh, trip, what is it called? triple uh a double double b or double a double a game yeah that's the new uh have you heard about that um description it's because double triple a, a games and and, and in, the, in the games it's there's a come too far a gap between so now we have sort of invented the middle class in the way that it's called double a and i think uh at least i heard some people refer with that word and use that word <clears throat> so maybe it's a thing but this game Frostpunk is uh, what I would call a, if not a triple A looking, but a double A game. It's a fair price. It's so well made. It's uh, like a classical, you know, you know, world building game, 3D, nice zooming uh, tools and 
nice sounds and but the story is that the the world is covered uh, at least a large part of the world is covered in a, in snow and ice and you have to survive uh, uh, like um you know sim city that's sort of uh, Indeed, aesthetic yeah. that way where you build up your city but this is a very unique style where it's just a, this scorched earth with this sort of uh, you know not any resources but then in the middle of the of the city the town that you build is like a core like a, a he, with heat that sort of yeah. gives heat to all these little houses around but what's very interesting about this game and it's quite similar to other like these survival games set in the nature and etc this game is circular it's a circle you usually build uh, like in like a square on right? a grid you system a yeah indeed on a, on yeah. a grid system but this is the first game at least i've seen a scene that has uh where it's circular so you need to think in different ways as well so you you just has built you build your town out of this core which is a circle in the middle beautiful graphics and then you just layer after layer need to consider how far is it from the core uh, and all these very mathematical in a way, a bit like the old uh, 90s games like Caesar and these city builder games, which was which were much more mathematical and, and really difficult to to complete. <laughs> where and nowadays you have tutorials and game modes where it's easier, etc. But but that's a very, very great uh, game made by also some developers who definitely were, were born uh, in the in the great 80s or in the late uh, 70s. Mm. Um, otherwise, I would say uh, I would say um, um been playing a bit of um um actually this is a <clears throat> bit hard to pronounce but though uh it's 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 t h o t h um tot uh, though or i don't know how you, how you um how you say it actually but uh it's a game made by a very great uh, platformer or uh, like 2d sort of logic um, designer called jebe carlsen and he was on the, perhaps you know, the titles uh, Limbo and Inside, um, it, the, like platformer indie games. Uh, Inside was very famous here about 2015 or mm. something. I sold, I think, 5 million copies or something. Uh, yeah, I remember it, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he's behind uh, the some of the core design in those puzzles and, and levels. And, and he's really, like, his games are just so special and, and unique. And he's from Copenhagen, too. Uh, or he's from Jutland, the other part of Denmark. But I met him in Copenhagen, where he worked. And he's, uh, he's also a friend of mine, and I, I like to play his games. He made another game called 140, which is a rhythm game, but a platformer rhythm game. It was one of the first first uh, of the kind when steam was just uh, getting a new you know uh, allowing indie games to to enter and he was one of the first ones to break through in denmark a break away from his uh, big company and do his indie thing and that's a those are some very good indie games because they are so uh, again so personal and mm. and uh, it's also a nice story because many people don't know maybe that that's the guy who also designed the puzzles and and, and levels and, and, and game uh, you know inside and, and, and limbo uh, I like to play that game, uh, Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, because it's a twin stick uh, shooter game. I never play those games, but it's just so well made. It's so incredibly oversimplified and, and, and so it, evil and so well made. By the looks um, of it, it is one of those games that would, at a glance, it would fool you. Because it is, yes. you are right, it, it looks inc almost to oversimplified. The point of, yeah, <laughs> oversimplification <laughs> is the word there, but... As you watch but that's the his, game, that's his brand. Us, it looks much yeah. more difficult and convoluted than you have than it has any right to be. Yes, and that's why he he's also getting this like really incredible fan base because people really acknowledge the way he feels and makes them feel uh, in his simple design. And as I said, it's a part of his brand definitely to do it as simple with the graphics as possible. But just like the first uh, 140 was so rhythm and music based, also in the coding and programming and the technology. He also made this twin stick shooter. Actually, it should say it, I think, in the description that that large part of that experience is experiencing the music through your gameplay. So if you are really meeting the wall and getting a lot of like respawning and, and, and you die and you, you get closer to a harder level and, and the music just changes accordingly to that and it's like this as atmospheric kind of non-beat, like sort of electronic music. So. And and I actually think uh, yeah that that's really uh, that's something which is also s incredibly great with the indies that you have some some people who are also teaming with music programmers and musicians and, and artists in, in that section so that you get double double uh, you know um, expression uh, so 
his games is definitely worth uh, trying out. Also, besides uh, Limbo and and Inside, uh, also Inside. If you haven't played that, that's such an incredible experience. Uh, I would really recommend to anyone. But uh, Thoth and 140, I play sometimes. Also, just in the in the break or something. Minion Masters, Frostpunk. That's what I can see. But but it's because honestly, I play a lot of games which is not on Steam. Uh, it's like old school uh, PC uh, rips, like Dino Blaster, like from the '90s, mm. uh, Caesar, Aladdin. It's just uh, exa files that I have executables that it's not even run through Steam. And then I recently just got uh, a package of SNES games uh, that I can play on. It's like a package where you can play all of the SNES games on your PC with even with a controller that I play on my TV. Then. Um, and I, I spent some time there playing some of those really old games. <laughs> it's just, it's, they're just so good, uh, still good. Uh, well, just to touch on uh, Toth, I hope you don't mind, because uh, yeah, I've sure, obviously sure. been browsing as you've been talking. Uh, my, um, since, we're, since we're throwing out names of people who we know, I happen to know uh, Defunct Games is a good buddy of mine who's a, a content creator on YouTube. He's a game reviewer. Um, He's reviewed. What's his name again? Sir, excuse uh, it's, me. It's, uh, his name is Cyril Lachelle, but the channel is Defunct Games. Um, he's actually De the defunct. Defunct, yes, as in uh, as in the word defunct. So to mean uh, to mean non non functional or non uh, uh, no longer no longer relevant. Um, yes. Um, his he, he's the one who um, actually appeared on my very first podcast. Um, I thought it would be interesting to get him on as a uh, fellow content creator, albeit one that was much further down the line than me, the only difference is that he's got a very rigid idea of what he likes to do. Me, again, I have lots of fuck it moments, so I kind of go where the wind takes me to a certain degree. Um, uh -huh. He's reviewed Toth, and uh, in summary, if this is the direction Carlson Games is headed, then I can't wait to see what comes next. He's a very hard ah. reviewer to please. So ah, not only a recommendation from you, Super. but a recommendation from him. I think I'm going to have to go check it out. And both of those oh, games that you referenced, yeah. they're currently available for six pounds and thirty-eight pence for the bundle, and that's very reasonably priced for a, for a, for a pair of Steam games that come yes. highly recommended. So yeah, that's um, yes. I think ah, I think you've given me more work to do there. You've given me more oh. work. To, now I've got two oh. good games to play. God damn. Oh yeah and those oh yeah you will you, you will spend some time there damn it game, I think. but but remember you need to turn up the music uh loud and stereo <laughs> and everything and and get immersed but but that's nice because i must admit that i'm such a visual person that i used to pick games in the store when they were like uh i don't know uh, very expensive uh like I yeah, don't know, 40, yeah 50 euros or something i used to go with the only money i had for 30 days to buy a game yeah with because of the thumbnails yes so, like it's yes, so visual yes. to me and nowadays it's different like yeah he gets he like he's he's really doing well with his indie uh, company and everything and uh, it has a lot of, of fans and users like thousands of users who are really happy with his game so so there's just something i'm so happy with it because i don't think i would have played the game if it wasn't for that i got it from yebe and, and, and etc because i would be like nah. and i would even put that feeling into the experience <laughs> yeah you but, uh, but i'm in, I, like with wet but, powder, like eh, it doesn't look like much eh, yeah what do I expect? yeah eh. but then when you finally yeah, get exactly. it's a crystallizing moment isn't it when you play a good indie game for the first time and you go oh yes. wait i yeah. get it Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. wow! Like, some some great. quirky stuff or like crazy music or like wow, was wow, this wow. I, I like that, and it, and honestly, it's not that many. I, I I remember like five, eight years ago, I used to get into this indie gaming thing because I was like, oh, that indie game is so good. I downloaded it. It was like, yeah, it's good. And that that game was good too, and the other game was even better. And whoa, and then came Braid, and I don't know all these hyped games. I was like, oh, all these games. But then again. Uh, the, the oversaturation and a lot of very mm. skilled people but maybe some people who were I don't know just maybe I don't know this and those reasons but a lot of stuff come out where, where it's like where it is not as fun and immediate uh, grasping or, or like it doesn't catches you and sure. I play a lot of games like you do as well because you also make your reviews etc I get to play a lot of games and, and I, I, I watch a lot of the trailers to, to keep up with what people are doing etc and I must say it's not to sound old already but I feel that uh, the videos from some of the ones that I like most the YouTube channels who used to really feed me the newest and the best like where I got a lot of new games were like yeah I can see that they are they only because of this new Patreon and everything da 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 they only have the time to go to the expos and the packs and all of these. And what do you see at the packs? 
maybe you don't see the person's game who you know was just far away from everybody and had this crazy idea and and that's what you can learn from the music industry you need to invest a lot more from the revenue of these huge companies even the indie companies you need to invest in building the culture so that you will spawn these the super developers who were just living like fucking i mean beatles were like these uh, non-urban kids who live pretty much afar from each other and out in nowhere you know so and luckily there was a, a massive uh, the, 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 like the peak of music culture in, in our century was happening there in my opinion so they could be like carried with wings into the city and, and do what they did right so mm. so I, I, th I think it's a bit more boring where it's obvious that the really great ideas are a bit further away or uh, I don't see as many original ideas it's very polished it is definitely a lot of the youtubers who are, have, have grown bigger they may also have gotten the the audience who are, are a bit more into these double a or triple a games looking a bit more indie if you know what i mean also what happened in the music industry like 10 years ago where sony as an example got a lot of like daughter and sub companies to not have the name sony on them so mm. that people who didn't like the big industry could buy these artists not knowing it was sony who distributed it and pu published it but like it is changing now so the indie is just uh it's just really changing i think uh so no you're 100 yeah, right and and people. once this is the thing people need to realize about indie games I, I and i thought this for the longest time once you once you get what indie games represent it you, you're stunned as to why you let yourself be ignorant for so long why you why you fooled yourself into thinking oh it's got pretty box art therefore it's better than anything else that's going to be on an indie game site. What, hmm. what could they possibly produce that's going to compare? I'll tell you what they, what they can do. They're going to have an interesting idea that's not inhibited by a, a focus group that will only hmm. tell you what they've experienced, that don't know what they want yet. And it takes hmm. someone with real vision or with at least a degree of, 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 of inspiration or a, a real a real clarity of thought to produce something that people experience and go oh wait i mm -hmm. i needed i need minecraft pr great example because who if you'd have if you'd have pitched that to anybody <laughs> you tell me yeah. that there's someone that's going to go yeah do you know what i'll give you yeah. i'll give you yep. a billion make millions. dollars for yep. that do you know what <laughs> do, will you take check I'll give you a billion dollars for it. There's yeah. no oh, one really? on this planet that would have said yes. And by the same token, if you'd have said to gamers 20 years ago, do you know what's going to make the most money? We're yeah. going to make a game. We're going to release a game. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sell you stuff as you play. We're, nah, don't be silly. Look, I buy a yeah. game. I get the game, right? Now yeah. you go, yeah. oh, <laughs> Sir wants players with his teams, does he? Well, then you're going to have to put your hands in your pocket for more. And yet, yeah, the indie yeah. market, yeah. you've got, yeah, there is, of course, but this, here's the thing with the indie market, microtransactions or DLC or additional games or second, they go into the pockets of developers who then reinvest that money into other games and projects. That's what happens. It doesn't go to stockholders. So to That's your true. point, and I think this wraps up this, this nicely, is that indie games, specifically games like yours, more than any other, almost any other genre or medium, there's a sense of ownership that the audience has that is intangible, so. but is definitely there. Yeah. Like people feel that they, they don't own you or your game, but they have an intangible investment and an emotional connection to it now. That there's nothing that's going to exactly. rival it. There's nothing that someone could release or produce that's going to come close to it. Exactly. Like I like it. That's so well put. It's a great. Uh, also summing up this uh, extraordinarily, extremely pleasant conversation, uh, Lauren, for sure. Oh, shucks. Um, um, but but uh, but I would say that uh, that's yeah. What I wanted to say a point. Um, yeah, the put, yeah to make a point. Um, yeah, I, I'll I'll think of it in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, uh, I talk well, what, my my own head off. Well, while, yeah. while you're thinking of it, I'm sure it's going to come. Uh, what I wanted to say at the at the end because what I uh, a bit behind the scenes here is I will do an intro to this video because um, yeah. we just got into it, but I want to give you an opportunity. So where can the yeah. people, where can the people find you? Uh, where can the people uh, buy your games and or music and or merchandise? And more to the point, 
What are you working on? What have you got next uh, for, for Dash? And what have you got next uh, in terms of anything else you're producing or what's coming up in, in your life? Well, um, the easiest way to find me and my the stuff that I'm doing is to go to Baby Duka, Juka or Duka, or how you like to pronounce it. But it's Baby and it's D to the U to the K to the A <laughs> dot com. The Baby Duka dot com. Uh, it's it's a name that I I got it like five six years ago. I have several like nicks and nicknames through my my life, and this this one is. Oh, ah, do you mind I, if I stop here? Uh, do you mind if no. I stop you? Because uh, defunct games uh, and me bat ideas around for game series all the time. One of the game series coming up is going to be What's That Name? Where we explore the reasons why game developers are called what they're called. And I would very much <laughs> like to... I'd like to include you in that series. So not to... Oh, that's uh, funny. That's not funny. to uh, give the game that's away a good now, idea. That's... But this, let's, let's, squeeze, let's squeeze a little bit more of this. Let me hold that thought mm -hmm. and I'll get that <clears> from you and we'll put that in another video so people have got another excuse to tune in and see some Baby Ducker. Sure. Sure. But, uh, obviously, a website here, I've got that. You've also got your Twitter. You've also got your YouTube page and you also have your Facebook page. You also have... A so, so, what, oh, Jimmy? What is the SoundCloud? Okay, it's a SoundCloud. Apparently, it's where uh, the music is is broadcast. There's a lot of music told. there. There's a lot of music there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I've never used SoundCloud before, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It, it used to be. A, it used to be a thing. I, I don't. Uh, I don't think you should be ashamed that you don't uh, know, know it now. <laughs> I'm, I, I, get, I get used to technology as and when I need to. I, the thing you got to learn about me is when I get something new, I'm oblivious to it, but then I master it. I have to know everything about ah, it. So I can I can and imagine. Now that I know what sound and now, and is, now you're to, now you're in, man. Yeah, yeah. Now you know. <laughs> it's gonna be done. So, but anyway, we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. Where can we find you? Yes, and uh, I, what I was trying to say is that the babyduka.com is that uh, that's the, the website that I <clears throat> try to maintain so that people can have a chance at least to see some of the most important things that I do. It's a beautiful website, and, and, by the way. It's a gorgeous website. Uh, th thank you, thank you. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit dynamic, and it's uh, there's a lot of stuff happening, and you know, it's a uh, we are the generation bef born before the AD and D, uh, and we live uh, proudly and happily ever after. So a lot of stuff is happening uh, all over the page, and uh, it's it's awesome and nice and. Uh, there you can find, uh, you know, um, some uh, animation, my games. Uh, you can find a bit of uh, some video I have done. Uh, I haven't listed as much of the music that I participated in because I kind of separated that a bit. I thought it was too a little too many things. So bring it up on on the production side, and it's been uh, yeah. But uh, I want a separate page for that. But uh, I would say that uh, actually the best way to find me and all uh, all about me is on my Instagram because that was the place that I ended up actually showing sort of my day-to-day, week-to-week uh, achievements and milestones and <laughs> great uh, hookups and, and, and great people I meet, etc. I, I just, I could just, at Facebook at a moment, I just, I lost track. I need to get back again, but uh, Instagram, and that's baby duka, baby ducker, B-A-B-Y-D-U-K-A. Perfect, perfect. I mean, I'll be putting links in the description of this video below, so rest assured it will be there if you need it, but now you've got the spellings and the pronunciations. Uh, listen, I, I can't believe we just spoke for two hours. That's... I was fully was it two hours? To go, I was fully expecting this to go 20 minutes, and then me reaching really? for the questions. I haven't even asked a third of the questions <laughs> that we pre-agreed oh. I might have to ask you if, quote-unquote, the conversation slows down a bit. Yes. So, I am... Uh, listen, I hope for I, I hope I find an excuse to have another one of these conversations with you because I yeah have, me, me too me too I have loved <clears throat> for sure. this. Do you know what? Fuck the recording. I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna call you just out of the blue and have a conversation because I've enjoyed the hell out of t any time, my man. Any time. Just as you know, as long as you know, I'm in this uh, big house with all this time to just do my my projects and and and, and meet cool people. Well, so that's, that's the thing. Perfect. Now I feel guilty. I don't want to distract because listen. All joking aside, <laughs> I I really enjoyed, no, I, and, I, I, and I'm, I was... I'm I'm previewing. Um, I'm trying to figure out a rating system because I think the problem with reviewers is unless you can quantify, unless you can say this game's better than this game, most of your opinion is going to fall by the wayside. No one's going to watch 25 minutes to get the full context of a video without at least being able to click at the end if they want to and go, is it good or not? So I've got to figure out a way of doing that. <laughs> However, yeah. by my current metrics. 
I can say without, without, it's almost not even close. There's only one other game that comes close and that's Data Defense. And I probably enjoyed that more than most people will enjoy that game. But <laughs> Danger Action Speed Heroes is the best game I've reviewed. And I want to oh, say thanks, thank man. you. Not only one for being so generous with your time here and before and during my review, but also for allowing me to review such a, one, a like a truly wonderful game and really thank opening you, my eyes to the experience. So you have my utmost gratitude. And if you are ever in England, I owe you a beer. I think that's oh, the bare you. minimum I owe you at this point. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I was just about to say that if I pop by the UK, I'm going to make sure that we're going to... You've got yourself a beer sure. on tap, my friend. 100%. All right. All right. And the same to you. Uh, also in Copenhagen, it's no, it's not, I'm not, I'm only, I'm, I'm a bit far away from Copenhagen, but it's never further away that if you're going there... Uh, I've got to get, uh, get some travel I'm, in me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get some travel. I'm your man in the city. I, Copenhagen I know is every nice this time of year, I hope. Yes. It's, it's nothing but sunshine, beaches, 40 degree weather. Exactly. Yeah, that's why everybody is coming there in the winter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. But I want to say uh, too. I also want to say uh, in the broadcast here and, and to you and while everybody's listening that this has been a really, really great experience. And uh, just uh, some weeks ago, I, I didn't know Lorne at least very well, and I got a bit closer to him and uh, on Twitter and, and by the reviews, and we shared a game and some conversations, and it was really a great experience. And that's why I need to give it up for this man. Give him what you got and uh, come back for his other extremely good high quality shows with all his good uh, cool friends and uh, and developers and i don't know what uh, for real and uh, you can use it as a jingle too <laughs> oh, oh yeah i'm gonna have to put a promo together and put that as the just just screw the rest of it i'll just put that as the promo just just listen <laughs> listen to this man well listen i i can't thank you enough uh like thanks say, man i'm gonna thanks. do i'm gonna do the intro at the beginning i'm gonna put this in the decision uh so I guess this is this is my point to be the professional host and, and kind of something. So, so thank you very much for listening to the edition, this edition of the House Scene Show. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check us out in the context below. Follow me on Twitter, and also be sure to follow yep, yep, the yep, man, yep, 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 yep. the legend. You can call him Jacob, but he's Baby Ducker to everybody else till you earn his respect. Oh, go and follow, go and follow them, go and support what he's doing, please. I'm I'm asking you as a favor to me. Go and support what he's doing. God damn! Thanks, cheers. Thanks, man. Thanks. There we go. Thank you, man. Woo! Excellent. That's that was it. really well done. That was Woo. two hours. Woo. How the fuck cut, did we cut, talk cut. for two hours? And there you have it. That was the interview with Baby Ducker. That's the first of what I hope to become a series of indie game developer interviews. There's a couple of others that I'm working on right now. I also hope to get Defunct Games back on the podcast at some stage in the future, so look out for that. In the meantime, though, please go and check out Baby Ducker on the social media. Links that I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Baby Ducker www.babyducker.com on Twitter at babyduckercph babyducker on SoundCloud on Facebook YouTube and on Instagram and go and support the game Danger Action Speed Heroes it really is quite a good game and if you need any further verification of that I happen to have a review on my channel so thank you very much for watching this edition of the Halcyon Show my name has been Lorne Risley his name has been Jacob Overgaard and we'll see you on the next episode of the Halcyon Show